This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnick and I'm sitting here with two of the best in the biz, Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart. What biz? Uh, Fun Police. <laughs> Wait, that, that means we're the best at quelling fun? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. That's great right. Great use of the word quelling. Oh, thank you. I'm so impressed by that. I wouldn't have said quelling. That's great. <laughs> that's so good. Do you, do you see that he takes the fun out of everything <laughs> by using words like that? By quelling. He quells. If anything, that provided more fun for me than just about anything you've ever said. Well, I was, <laughs> look, I was just trying to give you a backhand compliment there <laughs> by saying you're good at not being fun. Oh, gee whiz. That's funny to, to get that kind of criticism from such a nerd. <laughs> hey, guys. What is this, Topsy Turvy Day? <laughs> Everything's upside down. Well, guys, hey, I put butter and peanut butter together today, so I'm pretty crazy. You're wild. Crazy. Hey, so we should be illegal. That's what it should be. We've done uh, two live shows now, and uh, my parents were at our live show uh, this weekend, last weekend, and somebody asked them, "Who's your favourite reporter on the show?" And Mum did the polite thing and said, "Well, obviously I'm biased, so I'd say Jess." And I was like, "Mum, I'm not even my favourite." Oh, that's correct answer. Obviously, there. it's Dave. And then she was like, "Yeah, but that means you and Matt get to just like." Be you got you guys just get to hang shit on Dave, yeah, and that's what we do best, right? Yeah. Again, another backhanded compliment there. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Woo! Backhanded across the board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're all put down from that. <laughs> no one's come across well. <laughs> But Probably thank you actually. to all the parents that attended on... Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> well, my parents were also there. Matt's, well, let's see game. I'm so I, was, I left two seats empty for them. <laughs> I was standing there with my baseball mitt. <laughs> <laughs> it was my first game in Little League. <laughs> oh, he just went to the milk bar to get some smokes. Oh. <laughs> Dad had to go get me a reed. He didn't know what it was. Now I'm playing a saxophone recital and I'm Lisa Simpson. Anyway. Um. <laughs> but, yeah, we had a lot of people come out, uh, packed out another uh, second of four live podcasts and it was it was, it was a lot of fun. It was. It was great. Thanks to everyone that came along. Uh, we, of course, have to give a big shout out to uh, Gail and Preston who came from Utah and by now you may have seen some photos on social media which we'll post up of uh, we were given some gifts yeah, pretty amazing. Mm. That uh, Gail had made some puppets and you can that look like us. Hear and see that all happen on a Patreon episode later this month, which we'll put out that one there. And there'll be a video there's video of it as well, which will be there for the Patreon. But- <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen your face make that shape. Oh a good day. <laughs> I don't get me wrong, I loved it. Okay, great. But it was just very unfamiliar. Oh, it's going to be really hard for him to do it ever again now. I reckon that's that's one and done. Yeah. Let's go to the tape. It's burnt in here. I'll remember. I'll cherish that. <laughs> cherish the thought. That's why I don't speak French anymore. <laughs> oh. It's too distracting for onlookers. Ah, oh, that was joyous. But we're trying to tell you that we had a great time and you too can be part of the fun. We've got two more You Saturday. too? Bono is going to be there. Bono will be opening for us and then The Edge will be closing. <laughs> wow. And Adam Clayton is not invited. Oh, wow. And the third one. <laughs> and Larry, Larry Mullen's Mullen. senior son. <laughs> <laughs> Riffing off other pods. Know, there, that's Dave. right. Bit of fun, bit of fun. If you get it, you do. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, you two can be part of the U2 extravaganza when you come to uh, the European Beer Cafe the next two Saturdays at 3 o'clock. One of them, again, will be another probably Patreon bonus episode, so you need to be in the room or Patreon to hear it. And the other one we'll put out on the feed, and we may have a special guest at one of the two. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I just messaged him just then and said, which one can you do? Oh, confirmed it's a he, okay. Oh, oh or she. <laughs> Now doing a bit of James A. Custom material. <laughs> or she. Anyway, let's stop doing <laughs> in jokes. They're not in. Anyway. I refuse. I pulled out a prove at the show <laughs> on did. Saturday. That. Dave, can you edit all this stuff out, please? <laughs> okay. It's too baffling. We've gone baffling too early. I should also plug, I don't edit this out, my show, Bone Dry, which has been so much fun. And there's less than two weeks of it left now. I think there'll be uh, 10 or nine left 
when this episode comes out at the Chinese Museum, 7 o'clock, every night by Monday, and Sundays are at the very reasonable hour of 6 p.m. Mm, mm, that is reasonable. Mm. So Dave, many great can, dumpling options around the corner. Dave, the, can you edit that part out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was dry. That was bone dry. <laughs> oh, the name of the show is Bone Dry. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dave. <laughs> That's what a good director does, my friend. Yeah. I've met, I've met, um, I reckon most nights there's been a one or two do go on listeners, which has been really cool. That's awesome. And yeah. you should go see it. It is a really good show. Thanks. Bob. I say that very reluctantly. <laughs> you hate me, but you respect me. I respect your art. <laughs> yeah. But I hate you. <laughs> hate you as a person. Love you as an artist. Yep. Yeah. I'm the modern day. Oh, going through some options here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Pick an artist. No. Um, who's a bad person? No, Ke- Kevin Sorbo. No, oh wait, yes, yes. yep, that would be right. Love your art, hate your person. Yeah, <laughs> my first thing was to say Adolf Hitler, but that made no sense at all. Well, he was a painter. Yeah, oh, it made some sense. My subconscious made a good bit there. Could have gone Rolf Harris. <laughs> no, nah, that feels worse. <laughs> Oh, wow. well, he's made. He's, that's a big call. Yeah, that is a big call. We leap. can do, just do, edit all of this first section out if we can start the show now. <laughs> okay, welcome to the great show that is Do Go On. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We've got to make a quick note for last week's episode, which was uh, recorded live, and it was about the great man, Sidney Scheinberg. And Matt, at the time, you said that you forgot to say the official suggester of that topic. Yes, that's right. So we'd like to thank a big shout out to Patrick Webb. So a lot of people tweeted us saying, hey, you should do it as a topic, but Patrick Webb was the only one that filled out the official form and put it into the hat. So, Patrick, you made it happen. Oh, just for your admin. Isn't just because of your admin skills. Appreciate yeah, because we, we, yeah, it's very hard to figure out who suggested stuff unless they put it in the hat. Yeah, we can't go back through because there's so many different ways people comment and leave them in. So basically, if you want us to do a topic, make sure it is in the hat. There's a link in the description of this episode, which is where I got this topic that I'm about to tell you about. And I didn't know about it before someone suggested it. I thought we were just going to do admin this episode. <laughs> yeah, I've got some emails to reply to. and um... well, we'll reply live. Yeah. Well, I've got one here uh, from John in uh, the United States of America. Whoa. Thank you for writing in, John. <laughs> that could be fun. You can just hear me typing and talking out loud well, slowly. That will that be a fun Patreon bonus episode. <laughs> we write back to emails live <laughs> and uncensored. <laughs> Dave uses the space bar in a saucy way. <laughs> Ooh, find out how. Backspace, backspace. Ooh, keep back and spacing up. Ooh. <laughs> All right, let's get into the show. If you haven't heard it before, let me get us out of trouble by telling you that it is a uh, show where one of the three of us reports on a topic suggested by a listener via that form and that the Jack the Hat that I just mentioned, and it is my turn to tell you about a topic that you don't know what it's going to be. And to get us on to topic, I'm going to ask you a question. I don't expect you to know the answer. How dare you? But Mm. if you do... Five then what? Five points each. Ooh. Actually, Wait. No, to oh, the right. winner. To the winner. Okay. Yeah, five that makes more sense. each to the winner. Okay. Mm. It's a weird game. Yeah, mm. I don't like this game. Unless, well, it could be a tie. You've already made this weird. Okay, question. Which company was the target of Bic. the- Bic. <laughs> Ooh. Bic She's pen. locked out now, I think. Is that right? Yes, it's over to you, Matt, which is not, not never good. Could I get the full question, please? <laughs> <clears throat> Could I have it in a sentence? And <laughs> yes. This question is a sentence. Okay, great. Which company was the target of the two largest cash robberies in US history in the same year? Oh, yeah, I'm target. Sick, I'm sticking with Bic. <laughs> Bic and Target. Is that because it was a Target? Makes sense. That's good. Was it a casino? It. No, it is a... Uh, hang I'm on. Of Ocean's What's 11? the question? I wasn't listening beyond when you said Target. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll pick it up from Target. Of the two largest cash robberies in US history in the same year. Was it the Bellagio? Ooh. See, that's what I was thinking. It was not a casino. Mm. I asked that. Did you not? Did you stop listening also when I was Yeah, I didn't answering? listen to anything beyond the word target. <laughs> I don't expect you to know because we don't have this uh, this company in Australia. Okay, okay what don't we have? Maple syrup heist. <laughs> the maple syrup heist, yeah. Uh, no, what is it? Wait, how many, Olive Garden. How many of these do we have to do before we get to a point where one of us genuinely forgets that we've done the topic before, <laughs> yeah. does the whole research and brings it in? I forget a constantly. Yeah. Um, Remember we did Y2K? That so, still blows my mind. Sometimes you say like, yeah, like we talked about it on that episode. And I'm like, did we? But <laughs> that's saying more about we're, me. We've got to think it? of some American things. Burger King. Uh, uh, Chipotle. <laughs> uh, what about, what's their version of uh, Taco Bell? Bills? Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Bell. 
So close. <laughs> Taco Bell was the target of the two <laughs> largest cash robberies. What in the kind same of? Year. Can you give us a clue as to what kind of company? They're it a is? cash handling company with armored trucks. Uh, you won't know. Can I Chub. just tell you what it is? is it no. Chub? Is it Chub? Chub? It's two words. I'll give you the I'm first. It's Chub. Is it Chub? <laughs> Chub's so good. Is it Chub? Imagine having a company called Chub. Chub. <laughs> Chub with a double B. Yeah, that's real Chub. <laughs> the extra B's for bring your own Chub. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay, you want to give us the first word? Okay, first word is Loomis. Oh, Second like word is Fargo. Farja. <laughs> Loomis, far- so close. Fargo. F- uh, Fargo. Fargo. Yeah, Matt got it. Got five it. points. Thank you. Fuck you. Five <laughs> points each. <laughs> yeah, you did say. Five points each to Matt. So it wasn't Loomis Farja. No, I wish it was. Disappointing. It was, it's Loomis Fargo. Loomis Fargo. Which I hadn't heard about this before, but they were the target of the two largest cash robberies in US history in the same year. And I'm going to tell you about those heists. It is a heist episode. Oh, Yay! Love a heist. Uh, that question, you, I mean. You fucked us on that question. That, not a good question, Dave. Yeah, Dave, not your best question. Maybe Annie, Annie Perkins thinks you're the best report writer, but you're the shittest question writer. Mm. And Jess doesn't even write questions. Yeah. <laughs> and I so there's to, not a lot of competition. I used to do that for a job, <laughs> trying to think of questions. All right. Well, you can, maybe at the end you can critique me with a better question once you know other facts. But uh, I didn't want to give anything away because it is, it's a wild story. Okay, cool. Great. I love uh, a wild story. Uh, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to love this. Uh, it's been suggested by two people. David Hicks from North Carolina. See ya. He went to Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not the Australian uh, f- possible terrorist. Never know the legality of that. Was I, he a terrorist and then... Alleged. Just alleged say alleged. Terrorist. But this is H-I-X, so spelled differently. David Hicks from oh, North cool. Carolina. And uh, Marcus Brisman from Gothenburg, Sweden. Wow. Cool. That's cool. I love all of that. Uh, this was voted for by the patrons, ah. our patron supporters. I oui. put three topics in there. I don't know if you guys do this. You put three in there. You secretly hope for one to win. Always. I actually wanted a different one to win. Oh. Secretly. But then this one... Cuts out of the bag. And now, since... Though. Writing it, they know the show better than me, so I appreciate that. They've oh, they've picked trust, a good one. Trust in the. I Patreon. think that's the best thing about the vote is that you, I, I normally put up three that I think are good, and then they seem to know how to pick the best one. Mm. Yeah, I was happy with all three, but I just thought there was one other one which I might get to in the future. But this one, unless I snag it, which as well. I know. Damn it! I'm going to now. <gasps> no, yeah. please don't do. I can't remember what it was called. <laughs> You're just saying that, mate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bloody hack the mainframe. Oh, no. Get out of my mainframe. She's frame. already in there. Look, she's tipping it, tapping it away. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, she's gonna do something saucy with that space bar. <laughs> a, a space, a space, a space. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get into it. Loomis Fargo and Co is a cash handling company running armored trucks, transporting cash and maintaining ATMs across America. Armagard. Oh That's the one I've been trying to think of this whole nice. time and I didn't get it until you said armored trucks. I was like, ah. Mm. Oh Got God. it. So they're like Armagard. They're like Chubb. They're like if that, Chubb. If it helps put it in perspective for listeners, they're like a Chubb. Yeah, for any American <laughs> listeners that are struggling, it's like Chubb. <laughs> yeah. So Loomis Fargo was basically <laughs> formed. <laughs> I've never noticed how funny Chubb is. Why did it you is name very a company funny. Chubb? Chubb. <laughs> and they do, I think they do multiple things as well. They're quite a... Yeah, they're big. They're big much car. like Bic. Bic. Oh, yeah. Well, pens. They got two pens, four pens. Razors. Eight, eight pens. They do razors. Bic razors. Yeah. Whoa. Probably do other stuff. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. I'm so sorry to derail. Go, do go on. Loomis Fargo was basically formed in 1997 when two decades-old armoured security companies, one called Wells Fargo Armoured Service and Loomis Armoured Incorporated, came together to form one massive and super armoured service. Sort of like the Power Rangers coming together. Sick. Their first year as this company did not go well. During the first year of operation, the company was the target for the two largest cash robberies ever committed on American soil. That's the top two in their first ever year yeah, of operation. That's, that's not, I mean, the first year is always tough for the new oh, business. Man. That is not good. And then add in being targeted for heists, you'd be like, bloody hell, I'm happy oh. to see the end of this financial year, tell you that for, for free. Because yeah. oh. i got no money. Yeah. Come July 1st, I'm a new man. 
Uh, the first heist occurred in March 1997 when employee Philip N. Johnson, on his own, stole $18.8 million. Whoa! Philip N. Johnson on his own. That Philip, doesn't make any sense. Philip N. Johnson. What's the N for, I wonder? Nelly. N for Nelly, oh. <laughs> You're a big Burjo fan? <laughs> I was not a fan. Oh, man, we're going off trigger. I started following Burjo on Twitter. John and Burjo. And he is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> he does tweets every Friday and finishes them all with TJIF. <laughs> and then have you noticed that dozens of people write back TJIF, yeah, TJIF baby yeah, John? Baby John. It's... <laughs> oh, man, it's so good. He used to host our sale of the century. No, he didn't. Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. And, and also Burjo's catchphrase. Burjo's catchphrase, which mm. I thought was a fantastic show. <laughs> Can I just put that on the record? Anyway, Philip N. Johnson on his own. Philip Nelly Johnson (laughs) on his own. I'm sorry. I don't know him that well. I really should. Did it on his own. He stole $18.8 million from the Loomis Fargo armoured car that he was driving. I mean, just carrying that would be hard. That's a lot of cash. But he's already got an armoured car. He can take it away. He didn't have to carry. That's right. Because he handcuffed his two co-workers in different places. He overpowered them, handcuffed them, dropped them off, and then kept driving the truck. (laughs) He stole all the money inside and stashed it in a warehouse. But he was caught trying to cross the border into Mexico, arrested and sentenced to 25 years in jail. Oh, right. So he didn't get to spend his cent. Oh, no. Not even, like, didn't even buy himself an ice cream. Yeah, (laughs) petrol. He surely had to fill up on the way. He didn't spend a a cent. Wait, he wasn't doing petrol on his own savings, was he? That would be silly. So stupid. I would have paid it in bullion. He put it on his card, he tapped it and then went, oh, shit. (laughs) Sorry, can you undo that (laughs) transaction? I've got. And then he just gave him a a gold nugget instead. He gave a nugget. He tried to tap on a bullion on the tap on. Yeah, they had that in 97. New money, am I right? Mm. This guy was new money, but he was arrested, 25 years in jail. That's the first heist. The next heist to affect Loomis Fargo that year is the subject of today's story. Okay. Right. So that was the first massive heist. Because you really did get through that one pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. That one, in comparison, is quite dull, to be honest. I mean, he did it by himself. Yeah. I would be more impressed if he, like, carried it. Because, you know, when, like, you got a few too many coins in your wallet and your wallet's heavy? Yeah. I'd be like, bloody hell. That's a few dollars. Yeah, this is a few million. Oof. Whoa. What's that? Compared to a few dollars, how many times? Several million. Several million times. Bloody hell. You are that good is at maths. He- yeah. <laughs> it was so fast. It was really fast. And that does give me an idea of how heavy it would be. Yeah. A couple of million times heavier. Yeah. Just imagine a, what's it, two Olympic size swimming pools. Filled Whoa. with money. No. Just imagine two. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Great. Now she's on board. I feel like I'm for a swim. Yeah. Damn it, Dave. All right, let's get into the main story. In 1997, also the same year, 27-year-old David Gant. David Gant had just been made vault supervisor at the Loomis Fargo warehouse in Charlotte, North Carolina. <gasps> Charlotte, North Carolina. I know a good fact about uh, that. Really? Does it involve Loomis and or Fargo? No, but they have a basketball team. They're called the Hornets. And as a kid, I played for the Bentley Hornets. Huh. Oh, there you go. Did not expect that at all. There you go. We've learned a lot here today. Don't worry. Plenty more time for more Charlotte facts as this whole story is based in Uh, North Carolina. I think that might be all the ones I have. I was talking to to Jess. Yeah, I got hate. Okay, cool. (laughs) Uh, David Gant worked his ass off putting in long hours at work, but apparently wasn't cut out to be vault supervisor. He had recently left some cash unattended, and although nothing had happened to it, his boss told him if it happened again, he'd be fired. Oh, that's no good. On the morning of October 5th, 1997, Gant's wife, Tammy, made a call to local police reporting her husband, David, missing. He'd done the night shift at Loomis Fargo, but had never returned home. The police sent an officer down to Loomis to check it out and were surprised at what they found. David's truck was parked out the front of the Loomis gate, which was unlocked. The officer went inside and found that the door to the warehouse was also open, but no one was around. It was all a bit sus, so he called in some backup. Oh. The Loomis supervisor met uh, him and the backup inside, so they went in to find that the giant walk-in vault was locked, but all of the keys were missing. So was one unmarked van, and so was David Gant. Oh, he's in the vault. Uh-huh. Where is David Gant? In the vault. Oh, thank you. That's my guess. It's a good guess. Someone's come in, taken the cash, locked him in the vault. Right. That's embarrassing. Ho- hopefully they gave him something to do in there. Yeah. Sudoku book. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a bit samey, isn't it, Sudoku? Yeah, that's part of it. Oh. I mean, they're not going to give him something fun to do, are they? It shouldn't be a pleasant experience for him. Well, it's not his fault that they've robbed him. But, I mean, if they're already robbers. 
Oh, you now you're saying robbers are bad people. Yep. Oh, that is just like you. Yep. Judging. You don't know the story. Don't need to. How do you know that they weren't stealing that money to give to like a really bad person <laughs> who had cancer? Oh. And Dave, we're working on themselves. Sorry if it gives too much away, but is that the case? Well, well, we're going to find out. It is at this stage unknown. I don't think it is. Gant had closed up the night before and was working alongside a new trainee. <gasps> the cops checked the videotapes from the security camera in and around the vault, but both of the tapes were missing. Oh. But in a second locked cabinet, however, there was a backup third tape that was still there. The officers played the tape and the supervisor was shocked by what he saw. There on the tape was his employee of several years, David Gant, unloading the vault of all its money. David Gant. David Gant. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't say it a third time because something bad will happen. Oh, no. He'll appear. Oh, no. <laughs> With a lot of money. <laughs> oh, oh. He's banging on the vault door. Please, someone say my name. Get me out of here. I'll bring you $18 million. Or some other number that Dave said before? No, that was the previous heist. Oh. Will this beat it or be just shy? Only time will tell. But the money that was stolen was the property of federally insured banks and this meant that the robbery was a federal offence and the FBI could be called in. Ooh, the like, Fibby. Ooh, the oh. Fibbies are in. <laughs> oh, the, f- the feds, hey? Oh, it looks like the... I uh, prefer Fibbies. Yeah, you're mispronouncing it there, mate. Uh, the, uh... Matt, say Fibbies. It's fun. Fibbies. <laughs> you better, when they arrived, they were, you definitely better believe there would have been a, don't you give me any of this jurisdiction <laughs> bullshit, yeah. man. This is our case now. This is our town. <laughs> hey, I'm the sheriff in this town. <laughs> hey, I'm the mayor of this town. Huh? Well, I'm the president of this town. <laughs> okay. You're out of order. <laughs> You're out of You can't handle the truth. <laughs> yeah, we've seen American stuff. <laughs> yeah, God, come on. Hey, uh, we know a little bit about it. You talking to me? Hey, booby. <laughs> <laughs> We just quoted the three best American films. <laughs> <laughs> so the fibs rocked up. They quickly started interviewing uh, David's wife, family, friends, and co-workers. They discovered that Gant was a Gulf War veteran, had been honorably discharged, and had never been in trouble with the law in his life. No one the FBI interviewed could believe that he was capable of such a thing, especially his wife. She explained that they lived quite frugally, paycheck to paycheck, in their mobile home and that David David hadn't shown any signs of strange behaviour over the preceding weeks. No one seemed to even give him credit to pull off such an audacious crime and then disappear. They just didn't think he was capable. <laughs> They're like, nah, not him. <laughs> He's a bit of a loser, to be honest. He wouldn't be able to do this. Would you guys be surprised if I did something like that? Absolutely not. I would be surprised. Thank you, Matt. You don't. Fuck Matt. you, Dave. Hang on, I think you've got it in you. You're just too busy. I think you could do it. Too busy? Yeah. Oh, I really thought you were going to say I'm too stupid. So that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> too yes, busy. Stupidly and, busy. And I mean, you know, you grew up with a butler. Just go ask your butler for a loan if you need one. That's yeah. true. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Money, please. <laughs> that's the uh, Donald Trump defense when he's like, I mean, I'm already rich, so why yeah. would I be corrupt? Yeah. I don't need to be corrupt. I'm already rich. <laughs> Some people went for that. Anyway. Incredible. Ridiculous. <laughs> oh, you're going to start commenting on American politics now, Dave? Yeah. I think that's a little out of your jurisdiction. <laughs> hey, don't you give me any of that jurisdiction. I'll shove your jurisdiction up my ass. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> okay, I'm backing off. <laughs> Whoa. No, please, no. Oh, please, take it. Have it. Have You can have the case. All right? I had one day till retirement. I'm retiring one day early. I okay. quite like that as well. It's, that's always people fighting to do more work. Like mm. if, if it was different kind of cops, they'd be like, "No, you, you I think yeah, this is your it. jurisdiction, yeah. isn't it? Really? I want to go back to the computer, play solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> no way, Malone. This ain't my case. <laughs> I saw nothing. I've got no leads. I don't know anyone. You get in there and do what you do, but I don't do anything. I don't do crime. You know, I'm a I'm a pencil pusher, and I love pencils. He shoves them up his butt. Yeah. Oh, oh no. That's his jurisdiction up there. <laughs> so everyone was like, he couldn't do he it. Couldn't he couldn't it. do it. And yet here he, here he was on videotape unloading the vault. Where's the trainee? We don't know yet. Ooh. So he's unloading the vault. Either I'm on to something. He, either he was stealing the money or someone was forcing him to steal the money. The FBI were worried about Gant. Perhaps he was still locked inside the vault, I have written here. 
Right. They were genuinely worried about this. About this. And also, yeah, I guess, is there a reason only one tape was caught? Do they want them to find that tape? <sighs> Many questions early on. <laughs> <laughs> Loomis couldn't locate any of the keys, so they brought in a specialty locksmith to break into their own vault. <laughs> Which, to be honest, I'd be pissed off that you can break into the vault. <laughs> yeah. This vault is clearly not a good vault. Yeah. Because yeah. they got in there. When they got inside, they found it empty of both money and David. Hmm. No one was in the vault. Not in the vault. Nothing was in there. 2,800 pounds or 1,200 kilos of currency had been unloaded. That's so many kilos of currency. It's ridiculous. All, all up, 17.3 million US currency Ooh, had been stolen. Just shy. Uh. 11 million was in $20 notes that were to be used to stock ATMs. All up, that's 28 million US today. <gasps> so you could definitely spread all those out on a bed and just... Oh, you could, like, carpet your entire apartment in $20 notes. Sick. So you don't even have to sp- spend the money. You just use it for practical things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Toilet can, paper. You build stuff <laughs> and wipe asses with it. <laughs> yeah, that, that first guy did not need to go to Mexico at all. I'm here to build stuff and wipe asses. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all out of building stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Wiping asses is my jurisdiction, man. <laughs> Uh, Because the cash was to go into general circulation, it was non-sequential, non-marked, and was impossible to trace. Ah, fuck. (sighs) Because that's always the thing when people, like, want ransom money. You can just trace it. Yeah. yeah. Not unless they say, I want non-sequential bills. Yeah, and then the FBI is like, they got us. And then they use invisible ink. Yeah. And then they write, you're a dickhead on it. (laughs) Yeah. And then they put them under the microscope. They go, oh, they got me. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> they call them up. You're out of order. No, you're out of order. <laughs> we should go to America. Yeah. Oregon would fit right in. Great country. Great country. Am I right? Beautiful yeah. country. Great country. God's country. <laughs> uh, the Fibbers, the FBI, searched the scene for clues. And when they got into David's truck in front of the warehouse, they discovered his wedding ring in the ashtray. Oh. oh, no, he was having an affair. <laughs> With a truck. Oh, no. <laughs> he turned to ash. <laughs> oh, he loved that truck. <laughs> yeah, physically and mentally. <laughs> it was a full affair. You know, sometimes people have an affair, but an it's only affair. emotional. Yeah. He did it physical as well. Yeah. Oh, sure. he, he fucked the truck. He yeah. fucked that truck. <laughs> At oh, least. you better believe he fucked that he truck. He fucked that truck with his wedding <laughs> ring. No, wedding <laughs> finger. Oh. <laughs> It got stuck inside. That's why it's stuck in the truck. Yeah. It came off. <laughs> hey, crazy things happen when you're passionate. Yeah. You wouldn't know about that, but yeah. <laughs> hey, I've uh, I've taken off a few wedding rings in my time. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I've, I've had affairs with several uh, married people. I'd be like, I'm sorry, this is hard for me unless you take that off. And I, yeah. sort of, I, I spent about 15 minutes <laughs> just getting it off their finger. <laughs> Oh, let, oh, sorry. Let me get some. Let me get some lemon juice. <laughs> Soapy water yeah. or something. Oh, oh no! Oh, now <laughs> your fingers all swollen. Okay, now we're gonna have to wait for it to subside. I'm sorry. Okay. Ooh. Anyway, let but just hold on to that <laughs> yeah, foreplay on. feeling. Yeah. God, this is sexy. <laughs> that foreplay feeling. <laughs> TGIF. TGI foreplay T- feeling. TGIFF. <laughs> Thank God, I foreplay feeling. <laughs> Dave, oh, please continue it's with like the baby report. John Burgess is in the room. <laughs> uh, the FBI wondered if he was sending them a signal. Was he saying that he'd moved on with his life and cut ties to his loved ones? Or was this a cry for help? Yeah, this is someone they didn't believe could possibly have done it. Now they're like, ooh, is it a cryptic clue? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's an idiot. Is he capable of cryptic Why clues? was it because he was an idiot they thought he wouldn't do it or was because he was a good person? I think both. Oh. oh no, and not even, it's not just <laughs> not an, an idiot, idiot but just... like not brave enough and not ballsy enough to be right. like, yeah, fuck this, I'm just going to steal $18 million. Oh, imagine that would be the most heartbreaking thing to find out. You, It's not that they think you're too good to commit a bad crime, it's that you just don't have the guts. Oh. <laughs> I could. I could. I, I, could. <laughs> I could. I just don't want to. I don't want to. But I, if I wanted to, I, wanna, I could definitely I do could, it. I could. So shut up. I'm not a good person. No, I'm a bad person. I'm, I'm going to kick ass. over that bin. I'm a bad, bad boy. Yeah, I'm going to go buy a leather jacket. Yeah. Yeah, I smoke now. Yeah. <coughs> cool. <laughs> he did smoke. <gasps> 
Gant's wife told the FBI that they'd recently run up a small credit card debt, but didn't think this would have resulted in him stealing millions of dollars. <laughs> he's overcorrected a bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, we owe uh, two grand, and he's just stolen seventeen million. He's. I told you he was not good at maths. <laughs> Oh, they really had no motive for the crime, and David had been following his normal routine to a T. Hmm. No weird signs. I like the idea of no motive for stealing $18 million. Like, people need a motive for that. Wouldn't the motive be to have $18 million? Wow. Before this heist, he didn't have $18 million. <laughs> and he wanted it. That was his motive. <laughs> That's fair. Hmm. I do. I probably wouldn't. Oh, what would I do for eight? There's a long list. Anyway, just continue. Uh, yeah, there's like- a shorter list what I wouldn't do for eight million, but yeah, <laughs> can't even think. Oh, of one. Sorry, sorry. I left you a little space there. Couldn't think of one. All right. <laughs> the local Charlotte media found out about the the heist on the Monday, two days afterwards, and the FBI came forward and named their nationwide. Na- Named their nation. They released a wine. What an inappropriate time. Come on, guys. There's crimes to solve. Eyes on the prize, fellas. <laughs> and ladies. <laughs> they uh, named we've the- called this press conference to announce a beautiful range of <laughs> Savion blogs. And check out the Sangiovese. <laughs> and any updates on the, the case? On the rosé, yes. <laughs> yes. On this case of rosé. <laughs> <laughs> You'll note hints of strawberry <laughs> and gooseberry. But the big heist, anything on the heist? The what? Well, yes, if we do find the person who stole this money, they will be able to buy nine million <laughs> bottles of this deliciously cheap wine. Deliciously cheap? <laughs> Two bucks? Two dollars a bottle. How quick was that maths? That's real quick. I'm getting That's so much better. I've been doing Just the calculator, Perkins. Some mental exercises. Really? No. Why would well, I do that? What have been impressed? Yuck, Yuck. I don't want to improve myself. I'm perfect. <laughs> perfect Perkins. Uh, once they anu- announced their wine, they also announced <laughs> and named their nationwide manhunt, which they called Operation Charlotte, which I can only assume came from the FBI's pun department. <laughs> Charlotte. Charlotte. Because they're in Charlotte looking for a loot. Don't know if I have to explain <laughs> it. I'm going to. You did because I missed it. Oh, really? I was like, I forgot, Jess, I Jess is going to were... shoot me down for explaining this, but just in case. And then you're like, nah, good one. I forgot they were in Charlotte. They, Charlotte. That, they don't normally do that. Do no. I, don't know. I reckon one of them just thought of it and they thought it was so good they just had to go with it. You'd think that would be something like the media would come up with, but it's so good that it's coming from no, the, the FBI. The FBI. And if, they, if the media calls it anything else, they're like, come on, guys, please. <laughs> Bit of consistency across the board. It's just Charlotte. I watched a documentary on this and it was like, now the FBI had a super catchy name. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. They were ready to find their guy. It's the first thing you need in crime fighting. <laughs> there was a, a, I think catchy names are important. I saw a good one this week. Uh, you know, Geraldine Quinn, yes. urban comedian. She posted this thing. She was at the swimming pool and they're doing um, Pilates at the pool and they've called it Pilates. Yes. But it's spelled like P O O L A T E S. Like it reads as Pilates. That is Pilates. That's Pilates. That's Pilates in the pool. Keep your poo ladies out of the pool. Yeah, stop pooing in pools. Oh, no. It's not the done thing. Anyway, it's apparently good for your health. So good for your core. Poo ladies. That's cool, though. <laughs> Pilates in a pool. Yeah. Just need to maybe a little rebrand. I yeah. Reckon. A hyphen would solve that, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Operation Poo Lattie. <laughs> If we ever get a chance, we've got to try. <laughs> we've got to try and get one happening. All right, so Operation Charlotte mm-hmm. um, is in full effect. The FBI was still unsure if David was involved or coerced to rob the vault. Even if he was involved, they were still concerned for his safety as he's missing. If he was working with other thieves, perhaps one of them could have knocked him off because he's not a hardened criminal. Maybe he'd been uh, taken in by some other hardened criminals. They were worried for his safety. Some baddies. Some bad boys. And girls. The FBI interviewed over 100 people in the first 48 hours after the crime and then started delving into his past. A lot of people characterised him as a bit of a loner, but he seemed to have one friend at work. Her name was Kelly Campbell. She'd worked with David at Loomis for years before leaving the job about one year earlier. Other colleagues said that they were often seen joking around, went out for lunch together and sometimes even hung out outside of work and were still in contact since she left. What? So they were like, 
um, what's the word? Friends. But, but they were like, you Very know, I just sus. don't think, I don't think he'd have friends. Right. So they, they, no one wanted to use the word friend when describing. Them. I think we all know someone like that, don't we? Yeah. Someone who it's like, oh, he doesn't look have to friends. your left, look to your right. And if it's neither of them, it's Dave. <laughs> well, I'm sitting in a corner and I can't see anyone on my left door. Oh, no. <laughs> it's happened again. <laughs> nah, Dave, we're your business acquaintances. <laughs> Thank you so much. 33% each. <laughs> and I'm 34. Yes. Um, uh. Other colleagues, yeah, said that they were, they were friends and they still were in contact even since you left. But when the FBI interviewed Kelly Campbell, she denied that they were ever even friends. Oh, which is a bit of a slap in the face. Yeah, what a bitch. It, it, <laughs> it didn't really add up when contrasted with other people's description of them, so the FBI were a little sus. She went a little too hard on the, I don't know, I, nah, never met him. Real I don't bad. like him. He's terrible. Okay. If anyone's about to commit a crime out there, you can't just lie about a thing that everyone else can disagree with. Yeah. We saw you had lunch with him every day. Nah, wasn't me. Who? <laughs> Someone else. <laughs> I look like another worker there. <laughs> His name's Brendan. <laughs> we just look so similar. <laughs> Old Brendan and I. All right, we'll go check out if there's a Brendan who looks like you. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Brendan's disappeared. <laughs> and He's then, dead. And then I told the boss to pretend he never worked here yeah. for legal reasons. He's disappeared. <laughs> From the present and also from the past. Yeah. He's gone. I scrubbed his name from history. I cancelled him. <laughs> he, uh, he, he did it things. He was, was a bad guy. <laughs> We're not allowed to talk about him anymore. Don't give him the energy or oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> Just really doubling down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's cancelled. You can't talk you to can't him. Talk don't. To him. Don't. Just don't give him the time of day. <laughs> Would you have an address with this, Brendan? Cancelled. Cancelled him. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three, cancelled street. <laughs> Cancelton. <laughs> Don't talk to him. He's a dick. You'll hate him. <laughs> He's such a bad guy. He smells as well. <laughs> yeah, he smells really bad. Oh, yuck. Have you got gas masks? You'll need it if you were going to talk to him, which I don't reckon you should. <laughs> He's cancelled. He stinks. <laughs> oh. I cut out his tongue so he can't talk anyway. Because <laughs> of what he did. Yeah. Don't worry. He deserved it. Don't arrest me. Thank me. <laughs> yes, I'll have a medal of honour. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now go. <laughs> Please leave. <laughs> Please leave. I'm playing Scrabble online. <laughs> I haven't played a word for a few minutes. Someone might leave the game and I'm really up. I'm winning a lot. I'm up by 15 points. I've never beaten this person yet before. And scene. All right. <laughs> Such a rich character. Wow. Kelly oh, Campbell. Gosh. Yeah. She hates Brendan. Uh, 40... She loves Scrabble. <laughs> oh, God, what a backstory. 48 hours after the crime, the stolen unmarked Loomis van was found near the woods, less than 10 miles from the scene of the robbery. Okay. Completely abandoned. When they finally were able to break into the van because it was locked, they found, th- and and it was a bulletproof vehicle, so it was really hard to get in, they, were, they found $3.3 million of cash still inside. Huh. It was all the lower denominations, one and five dollar bills, and it was assumed that the robbers had either run out of room or run out of time to take all of the cash. I think they were just leaving a tip. <laughs> Thanks for the Big work. Big tipping culture in America. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, about we got to factor in what ten percent of the bill, fifteen <laughs> yeah, percent of the bill is yeah. about right. They're generous. We're millionaires. We yeah. can afford it. <laughs> uh, also inside the van was Gant's work issue pistol, the vault keys, and the two missing security tapes. So they obviously watch the tapes. And on the tape, David can be seen doing a little celebration dance after loading the final money into the van. That's cute. (laughs) They were now pretty certain he might be involved. (laughs) Unless the the guys, all girls, telling him to do it are like, now dance. Dance, Dance, Dance piggy. Wear the dance. (laughs) Put on the mask and dance for me, daddy. (laughs) Is that right? He danced. He he danced a lot. So the FBI hoped that David Gant would contact his wife or family and Special Agent Dick Womble <laughs> was charged with keeping in close contact oh. with them. Is anyone keeping track of the great names? Because that <laughs> deserves to go straight into the leaderboard. Dick Womble. <laughs> Dick Womble. I've bolded it and capitalised it. Dick. Dick. Dick, Dick Womble. Womble. Special Agent Dick Womble. I mean, just Special Agent Womble is good. Yeah. 
you know? And then you, like, it'd be funny if you work with him for a while, you just call him to specialize at Womble, and then you find somebody who calls him Dick, and you're like, oh, my God, his Wait, name's well, Dick cause, Womble. Because I assume his name is Richard, and there's so many things you can do with Richard. You can be Richard. Rick. Richie. Rick. Don't Ricky, go for Dick. Ricky. Does anybody go for Dick these days? I just think that he has such a great sense of humor, or someone who have, his parents <laughs> named him legally Dick Womble. You can change that. I reckon that could be the best. Do you reckon that's top five? I reckon that's top five. It's got to be right up, there, up there, yeah. yeah. I'd love to see someone put together a list if anyone has the time. <laughs> yeah. Dick Womble is fantastic. Mm. <laughs> Sadly for Dick Womble, his family didn't hear from David. I didn't have to mention this, but I just wanted to say Dick Womble <laughs> for the tape. I also think that it's almost it's it's almost too good that it's not that good again because it, it feels made up. It feels like something... You know what I mean? There's, it's, it's, no. I don't believe a real person came up with that name. I think he knows he's being funny. Dick Womble. Um, every time he hands over his FBI badge to prove who he is. And someone goes, hey, no, this is my jurisdiction. <laughs> Get out of here, he Dick. Says, Get out of here, Womble. Dick Womble. And they say, right this way, sir. <laughs> yeah. You don't, take, you don't steal shit from Dick Womble. Uh, the case was due to air on the popular show America's Most Wanted and the <gasps> FBI all gathered around to watch the TV show and stood by the phones which they expected to light up uh, once the tip-off had aired. Because that's basically the point of that show. They put out a crime and say, if you've seen this man, yeah. call us now. So they were ready. But sadly, the baseball ran long that night and the East Coast aired the baseball instead and a lot less than expected uh, were able to watch the show. In a reenactment I saw on the Discovery Channel... The FBI agents are all eating Chinese takeaway and then one of them throws their fork at the TV in protest <laughs> when the baseball stays on. It is great acting. Very good it's stuff. Fantastic. Wait, so this this has been reenacted. I thought you were talking about the America's Most Wanted reenactment, but there's a reenactment of, of people them. watching a reenactment? No, it's a reenactment of them being disappointed that they By can't not watch the reenactment. <laughs> and then they throw a fork at the TV. <laughs> a plastic fork? Oh, yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Don't worry. The classic reenactment thing at a dinner like that, someone will wipe their face with a, a napkin yeah. and throw it on the table. <laughs> Did anyone do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was there any of that? Oh yeah, everyone. A lot of people. Any people slamming do that. fists on a table? Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of rolling of the eyes. A lot of hands on hips looking exacerbated. Harumphs. Oh, did, were there harumphs? Yeah, and then they all yelled, you're out of order at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they were angry. <laughs> well, they were pissed off because, yeah, no one saw their most wanted episode, which basically was they were, were hoping would get this guy's face out there. Could they not just, like, watch it on the internet later? Yeah. Do you know? Mm. It's like, what, you don't have reruns? Yeah, it is weird that, it, they, yeah, there was no ad break or anything. How long? It's like, anyway. So obviously a good reason for this. Couldn't play it the next night. Yeah, it may have, it may have been repaired. It was shown on the other side of the country, but they obviously wanted. What the side East of the country did it occur on? The East Coast, yes, yeah, which is where they wanted people to see it, and that's where the baseball mm. ran long. Uh, to try and Who get won some... the game. Uh, baseball was the winner, <laughs> <laughs> and the FBI was the loser. <laughs> Uh, to try and get some leads going, Loomis Fargo themselves offered half a million dollars for any information that could lead to the recovery of the money, and people were asked to keep an eye out for anyone who had suddenly seemed to come into a lot of cash. <laughs> oh, <Jeff. laughs> you didn't get the uh, <laughs> Charlotte, but <laughs> come into cash, that meant something to you straight away. <laughs> All right, you're going to have to explain it to Dave. He didn't. <laughs> Just imagine someone standing oh. over a pile of cash. Wow. See, this is where you two have got black spots in your <laughs> vision. Having... Dave's so, black having... spot is full of cum. I don't know. <laughs> having so much money that you're like, I got jizz on this and it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I'll, I'll just throw it out. I'll just throw it in the fire. Oh, no, that'll smell bad. <laughs> oh, don't do that. Chris, what are you doing? <laughs> Brendan told me to do it. <laughs> He's such a perv. <laughs> That's a niche. That's a niche. It's a fetish. Niche fetish. And we're not fetish shaming. Setting your <laughs> sperm on fire after coming on money. Yeah. That's niche. US US money. Only. US, yeah. yeah Australian yeah. money, that'll smell Does like not plastic. Get That's me terrible. going. So would be the best one to do it on would be yeah. dong. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry uh, I did this. A man named Eric Payne was dobbed in uh, as having spent a lot of money that seemed out of character. Eric he- Payne, also a great name. P A Y N E? P A 
I N. No, actually, no, it is P A Y N E. I've just misspelled it the first time. It is P A Y N E. And Sorry. Eric Payne is good. Yeah, Great, you no. brought the pain. Bring the pain. He was dubbed in as having bought a Chevy, like a a, a truck Chevy. So I'm like the idea that someone's just gone cash. I just bought a car. Ah. Yeah, you're a suspect now. It's a bit <laughs> sus. You don't look like you could afford a car. <laughs> he bought an expensive Chevy. So he bought an expensive Chevy, a Harley, and oh. first class tickets for a sweet vacation in the few days since the robbery. He'd also been seen partying a lot and had bought breast enlargements for both of his sisters. <laughs> oh. I thought that's that started off bad. <laughs> and it oh, got yeah, worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, g- creepy if it was for his wife. <laughs> well, he bought his wife breast enlargements and paid for her to have a nose job. Is she asking for any of this? Or? Are his sisters asking for this? I, that, that might be one of the last people I would want to I give know, me money for that. That is so strange. This sounds like it's Biff Tannen in the in the weird <laughs> future timeline of Back to the Future 2 where he's bought Marty's mum breasts. She goes, you paid for these, you can have them. Yeah. Wow. This is that guy. It does sound like he's based on Donald Trump. For his sort sisters. Of. Uh, Payne explained to his friends that the influx of money was from an inheritance, but whoever dobbed into the FBI didn't believe him. I mean, that is just such a weird thing, isn't it? So The FBI got hundreds of tip-offs like this, but when they investigated Payne, it wasn't just the strange behaviour of buying his siblings breast implants that stood out. <laughs> He worked at a graphics company. It was also the breasts themselves. (laughs) Yeah. Whoa, they stood out. (laughs) They botched the nipples bad. (laughs) (laughs) Botched. (laughs) That's such a good word. Uh, He worked at a graphics company just across the street from where the abandoned van had been found. Uh, Oh, well, that's a bit dumb. When they looked into his spending. Working across the road from there. Yeah, don't work across the road from anything. (laughs) <laughs> Idiot. Especially the scene of a crime. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. They discovered that he'd paid for the Chevy in $20 notes. So they were like, this oh. is all being a bit sus. But he wasn't the only one exhibiting strange behaviour when it comes to spending. In nearby Gaston County, a man purchased a $600,000 home and paid cash. $600,000 home in cash. In cash. And this is US in the 90s, so, you know, I'm... You're looking at like close to a million dollars home. That would be a mansion. It's a million dollar home. Absolutely. The man was Steve Chambers. Uh, not a good name. Who'd gone on an absolute spending spree. He paid cash for a truck, bought a new convertible BMW, a Rolex, spent $900 in tips in a single night and bought lots of art, including a velvet portrait of Elvis Presley. Okay. These guys don't sound super smart. No. <laughs> also... A velvet portrait? Mm. That's fun. Why surely blue suede? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? my God, yes. Why? Yeah, I, I'm thinking like uh, how, how dumb to so obviously flaunt all your money, but maybe these are the guys who did it so that that is now an obvious rule not to do it. You know? Oh, I see. But why buy two cars? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> it just, yeah, it feels like. People are going to ask questions. Well, you know, they're asking questions because before the heist, Steve and his wife, Michelle, lived in a mobile home and had been unemployed for two years. Right. And suddenly they're buying the equivalent of a million-dollar mansion in cash. You'd think at the very least you would you would wait, uh, wait a while. And this is days after the yeah. heist had happened. The house he bought was in the tiny town of Cramerton, just outside of Charlotte. It had only 2,500 residents and has the Guinness World Record for the shortest main street in the world at only 75 feet. So it's a really, really small town. They bought in an exclusive gated That's community. 75 foot long subs. Whoa. Hang on. That's, that, that checks out. Thank you. Just had to carry the one. <laughs> Uh, they bought in an exclusive gated community uh, called Kramer Mountain. So there's your first problem. In a small town, people talk and they notice newcomers, and in a gated community, even more so. Yeah. <laughs> so not a, not a good choice. Michelle told her new neighbours that her husband, Steve, was a former pro footballer who'd played for the Dallas Cowboys and had since become a very successful professional gambler. And also sold laundromats in Texas. Okay. She's really <laughs> flinging around the lies Yeah, there. come on, mate. The, I mean, you, the gambling is fine, but it's pretty easy to figure out just by going to look at a, a book if you played for the Cowboys or not. That's right. It's an audacious story and not many people believed her because the Dallas Read Cowboys. book. <laughs> Well, they're such a famous team that even the most uh, diehard NFL fans had never heard of Steve Chambers. Yeah. 
So they were a bit like, oh, that's, that's a bit weird. Michelle also paid for everything with packets of cash, oh which is God. very, very suspicious. Packets? Mm. <laughs> like chip packets? Yeah, filled with cash. <laughs> that is pretty weird. She didn't have a wallet. <laughs> she just carried around a chip packet. No, they're wrapped in those little paper ties that yeah. hold wads of cash together and then wrapped in big plastic blocks. And she's just whipping those out of the shops. Oh, my God. Uh, the mayor of the town, Kathy Miles, lived a few doors down in the gated community. So they've moved in three doors uh, up from the mayor. And she herself was super sus and spoke to local police, who at first thought that they must have been spending newly acquired drug money. Oh, right. So they're like... You know, obviously there's no paper trail for drug money, so that's where they've got this cash. Police looked into Steve's history and he had a criminal record for drug dealing and bookie stuff, but nothing major, sort of fixing little, uh, f- fixing gambling stuff. Yeah. Gambling gets broken sometimes. You gotta, Someone's got to fix it. That's right. Someone's got to sell laundromats in Texas. That's crazy. Eventually, though, the cops thought of the recent heist and alerted the FBI, who by this time had hundreds, if not thousands, of tip-offs. <sighs> So you'd think if you'd robbed a vault, you'd lie low, which is what you just said, Matt. But Chambers brought even more attention to himself when he was kicked out of a local club for causing a disturbance when he got into a fight with his wife, Michelle, over her suggestive dancing. <laughs> what was she suggesting? With her dance? That he bloody picks up his socks and does the dishes once in a while. He didn't take kindly It wasn't, wasn't so much a suggestion. It was one of those things where it's like, I'm suggesting, but really, I'm telling you to do right. it. Right? She was she was literally spelling it out with her dance moves. Yeah, yeah. And he was D, like, <laughs> I, <laughs> and so on. S H E S. Was he gonna spell out Dick Womble? <laughs> <laughs> Incredible! He's on to us. We gotta run. She's doing the Womble. Yeah. Sounds like a dance move. <laughs> She's doing the charade. Sounds like fumble. <laughs> Uh, as he was being thrown out of, by security, he offered to buy the club for $400,000 in cash. Oh, my God. According to the Washington Post, they would also hire limousines to ferry their group of friends out to dinner at local restaurants. So they are not lying low. Right. They're flying high. They are. But it wasn't just Steve who was acting suspiciously. Oh, no. The FBI painstakingly also went through local banking transaction records to see if there was any suspicious activity after the heist. They went through thousands of documents and two things stood out to them were marked by bank tellers as suspicious. One of the incidents concerned Michelle Chambers, Hmm. the suggestive dancer. She had walked into a bank the Monday after the heist and shown the teller a briefcase full of money and literally asked what the highest amount of money she could deposit without having to fill out any paperwork and create a paper trail. <laughs> What's the best way I can launder this money? She, when the teller gave her a funny look, she then paused and said, don't worry, it's not drug money. Fucking hell, Michelle. And winked at him. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Huh? The teller noticed... She wipes, that- like, bits of coke off the money. It's like, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine, that's... that's uh, Bits of coke. (laughs) It's not drug money. She winks, leans in and and whispers, it's stolen from me in a heist. (laughs) You guys have uh, teller-client confidentiality, right? (laughs) Well, she broke that because the teller noticed that the money in the suitcase still had Loomis Fargo wrappers on it. Oh, my God, Michelle, you dumb shit. (laughs) She filed a suspicious activity report, which the FBI picked up on when they're going through all the records. We just got to take a second to think about that. that you is... absolute <laughs> dumb shit. It shows her a suitcase full of money with Loomis Fargo written all over it and says, what's the highest amount you'll take of this without tipping anyone off? Don't worry, it's not drug money. You absolute <laughs> dumb shit. Have I said that enough times? <laughs> I love it so much. It's incredible. It's Wait, naive. did she say this with words or with dance moves? Yeah, she acted it up. <laughs> Sounds like not drug money. <laughs> So the FBI were pretty confident. Do you think dancing is charades? Yeah. What do you think I'm doing on that dance floor? I'm spelling words. Uh Mostly help me. (laughs) Get me out of here. Get me out of here. (laughs) These people are grinding a little too close for my life. Most people are cutting shapes, Dave, spelling words. (laughs) I'm doing sums. (laughs) One plus one. (laughs) So the FBI were pretty confident that the couple chambers had the Loomis money, but sadly they still couldn't prove it was the heist money. They started putting the the couple under surveillance and noticed several trips to banks to make deposits or set up safety deposit boxes. 
so they were obviously ferrying cash to and from their house. Local residents of the small town were suspicious of FBI cars that seemed to constantly be parked on their streets, and the FBI even employed a plane to fly over the chamber's house to watch their movements, and everyone in the town was noticing it. Why is there not enough to search their place yet? No, obviously there isn't. It feels no, like no because the money's not marked. Remember, yeah, so they, so they can't. can't trace it. They'll be like, "All right, we can take you for uh, you know, we can arrest you for having for money laundering, but we can't prove that this is all the money." And also, they're worried that they don't have all the money. So uh, if they arrest them now, they might find half a million bucks in under their mattress or whatever, yeah. but the rest of might disappear forever. Right. So they're worried about it. Yeah, Just they thinking, do sound like they're smart enough to have a yeah. way of <laughs> making the rest of it disappear forever. <laughs> Yeah, so they come on it and then they burn it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's all these FBI car, uh, cars parked out, out the side of their house and there's planes flying overhead. But everyone in the town's noticing except Steve and Michelle. They're the only people who did not notice that they were being watched and they continued <laughs> to spend all the, all this money, all under the watchful eye of the FBI. Michelle bought a truck for her stepfather in cash and Steve bought his wife a $43,000 diamond ring also in cash. Where do you go to buy that? <laughs> Where can I, where can you, where, where? Oh, Angus and Coot. <laughs> <laughs> Bevels. Breville? Oh, Breville's. Is it Breville? Bevels. Uh, Bev- Bevels. Bev- no, no. Oh, that's right. Breville's make milkshake makers. Yeah, Bevel. You were right. Oh, I bought a couple of rings in my day. A couple of $43,000 rings? <laughs> I got a couple of discount rings in my day. For, for who? For good friends and acquaintances. I don't have got a Buying ring. off cops. Buying them off, <laughs> paying them off. Is that, don't you think it's weird to go like you and your wife have basically unlimited cash and he's bought her, like does that mean anything? You go, yeah, I've got you a beautiful ring. Yeah, for for, he, for her, like she's like, well, you probably could have afforded a $100,000 ring. And I, so could I. This doesn't mean anything. <laughs> We've stolen this money together. At least let me pick it. <laughs> That's so much money. Oh. Is it the thought that counts type of thing then, maybe? Yeah. I thought about buying you a $43,000 ring, and I did. <laughs> now, the FBI knew something was definitely up with their behaviour, but even after this surveillance, they couldn't connect them to the stolen money or to David Gant, but they still didn't know where he was. There didn't seem to be any connection between the two parties. They couldn't work out how they'd even know each other. The FBI were getting desperate to make a connection between the two different groups and went through Steve Chambers' high school yearbook. Inside it, they found a picture of Kelly Campbell, <gasps> David Gant's former co-worker that denied their friendship earlier on in the piece. Either this was an insane coincidence and David Gant's close friend also went to high school with this guy that was suddenly coming to lots of cash, or things were slowly starting to add up for the investigation. The FBI again interviewed Kelly Campbell and she was the only one they'd spoken to throughout this whole thing that refused to take a polygraph test. She was standoffish and nervous when talking to the officers. Meanwhile, our football player turned gambler Stephen Chambers and his cash depositing wife Michelle bought furniture, bought a furniture discount centre in town in cash. So now they're buying businesses in cash. In cash, they named. It I literally after- don't even buy coffee in cash. <laughs> I know it's it's, it's crazy. That's like four dollars. Yeah, and they're spending like hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. Cash. They- Who can count that? You got to have one of those little ticket, 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 ticket. Yeah, that's a better sound. Oh, I love those things. Does- I want one. <laughs> you want to count your four dollars for coffees? Yeah. Uh, hold on, just let me check. I've got the right money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's checked out. <laughs> do you know um, if in America, in North Carolina, do they all these businesses and everyone who's Collecting this money, selling stuff, do they are they going to have to forfeit that money at the end? You know, like this business, whoever sold the business, got oh, paid. because it, it's stolen money. Yeah, I'm actually not sure if you. I don't know if you can argue that if you don't, if you didn't know about it, and it mm. was for you, it was genuine. That, though, to be honest, a few red flags would be raised for most people when they rock up and just be like, "I want this business." Here's three hundred thousand dollars in a brown paper bag. You'd be like, "Oh." Okay. <laughs> That's a little bit weird. Uh, they named the furniture shop after themselves and called it M&S Furniture Gallery. Oh, my oh, God. Marks and Spencer <laughs> was born. <laughs> I guess they didn't want to call it the S&M Furniture Gallery. Did you write that? Huh? You wrote that joke, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> that is good stuff. Don't call him out for writing jokes, Jess. No, you're right. That's, that's admirable. 
Good job. I, uh-huh. thought, <laughs> I thought it was funny if it was written or if it wasn't. And any Why did you laugh? You... Yeah, no one laughed. Why did you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one laughing. You said, <laughs> I, sound I, crazy. Thought, I thought that was very funny. That's what you said like a minute after. To be honest, that's it. pretty good from Matt. I thought I did. I thought that was very funny. <laughs> Talking about the Symphony of Metallica album in that way, I thought it was very good. It's true. <laughs> that was definitely what I was referencing. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they really slipped up because Michelle was... Oh, s- finally, they'll really slip up. <laughs> she was seen with Kelly Campbell at the furniture store. Oh, my God, Michelle, you stupid woman. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Campbell drove up in her own brand-new spanking minivan, and when the FBI looked into the license plate, the van was registered to a known alias of Steve Chambers. So he'd obviously bought it and given it to her. They so now you, you can buy any car and you buy a minivan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'd get a... Proper size van. Get a van. Get a full Full van. van. Steve, you're tied up. (laughs) Get a Hummer. (laughs) He just bought his wife a forty-three thousand dollar ring. You can buy. You can buy a minivan. It was actually a mini ring. (laughs) Very toe. It was a toe ring. (laughs) (laughs) I said toe bar. I wanted a toe bar. (laughs) I wanted a forty-five thousand dollar toe bar. (laughs) (laughs) I want to pull a boat with this mini boat with a mini van. (laughs) Oh, they now had a solid connection between Kelly Campbell and the Chambers, so they all know each. At least those two know each other. This whole time, the Chambers kept spending and depositing cash. She even handed, this is Michelle, even handed in a packet of cash wrapped in money bands to the bank. One of them was from Loomis Fargo and had been signed by a Loomis employee and could be traced back to the vault that had been ransacked. Whoopsies. So now they had evidence that she is spending money from that vault. They could arrest her, but they decided to step up their surveillance to try and catch all of the suspects and also reclaim all the money. Take the little paper tags off. Honestly, that's all she had to do. Just do that. And I'm an idiot and I thought of that. I'm guessing, well, I mean, you are hearing this in the context of a, it was a big crime. We obviously, they obviously get caught because we know all about it, right? almost thought for a second that you were going to argue no. the point. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I got more of a laugh out of him. Because you said something funny. <laughs> you didn't even have to write it down. <laughs> S&M, S&M that, that's good stuff. Though. That's good. I love it. They've got like the call of the kudaloo. <laughs> That's not how you say that. I've never had. To, I've never tried to say it out loud. Instant regret. Was that a Metallica song? The call of the Cthulhu. It's a cover that they opened Symphony of Metallica with. Doesn't matter. It almost does not matter at all. <laughs> Nothing else matters, I guess. Oh. In the end. Is that another Metallica reference? Yes, it's also on that album. You saved it. Thank you. Well done. Someone out there would have enjoyed that. Maybe. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> A judge gave the FBI permission to tap the Chambers' phones and they started listening in on their conversations. They heard Chambers calling different people about money, including setting up a $2.5 million account in the Cayman Islands. He also spoke to Kelly Campbell, but sadly most of the conversations was inane and couldn't help them get a conviction. The FBI were about to abandon the whole plan and just swoop in and arrest them all when Kelly Campbell told Steve Chambers that she'd just heard from David Gant. (gasps) They now knew that Gant was still alive and that they were all working together. What? David Gant would send a code via a pager to Kelly that indicated where and when he would call a payphone and that's how she spoke to him. Right. Kelly Campbell told Steve Chambers where and when she would next speak to David Gant, so the FBI tapped that payphone in anticipation. (laughs) It rang as expected. They were watching the payphone, but Kelly never turned up to answer it. So an FBI agent ran out of a car, answered it, and briefly heard David's voice on the other end of the phone before he hung up. He was like, hello? (laughs) Gant's like, hello? (laughs) The FBI guy's like, hello? (laughs) (laughs) David Gant's like, oh. And then he hangs up. (laughs) That's all recorded. Yeah. They used the recorded (laughs) voice to confirm. They listened to it over and over again. They confirmed it was David Gant. So they're like, he's alive. Wait, what you just said happened actually happened? (laughs) <laughs> Look, I'm paraphrasing there. Paraphrasing You're paraphrasing hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, FBI agent sense, definitely yeah. said hello and then David Gant said hello and then when you realised the other end of the phone it wasn't Kelly, he hung up quickly. Why didn't Kelly turn up unless she was watching the telephone box to see if they were being like... I don't think she was watching. She's she wasn't watching that watches. smart. No, none of these people are smart enough to think yeah, that anyone's right. onto them. They think they are. They think they're nailing it in their minds. They're millionaires the and they've, they've gotten away with it. I think everyone else, like I once had to take out a couple of grand to go pay for uh, flights in cash to to head to London years back, 
and crossing the road from the bank. It would have been like a 200 oh. meter walk. I just felt like everyone's watching me because oh. I got two grand in my pocket. I'm the same every time you have any sort, any amount of money. Just yeah. like, is he looking at me? Yeah. yeah. Is he going to jump me? <laughs> oh, no. It's so scary. I hate it. Yeah, but these people, are they, they don't give a shit. But I suppose, like, if you've got 20 grand in your bag and someone steals your bag, you're like, well, I'll just go home and get another 20 grand. Yeah. Ah, well. Get one of my other 20 grand bags. <laughs> Chip packets. <laughs> <laughs> get some, I'll get the salt and vinegars today. <laughs> Pink means salt and vinegar and 50 mil. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite right, is it? 50 Gs. There we 50 go. Gs. The FBI continued to monitor the group's phones and Kelly told Steve Chambers that David Gant had asked her to send him more money because he was now running out, which blew the authorities' minds because they thought that he had millions of dollars. But he, on the phone, had said, apparently, can you send me some more cash? Oh, how quickly are they running out of it? So what, is Gant's asking for it? Or is yeah, Gant-, Gant has. So he's like uh, the one that they don't know where he is. But all yeah. they know is that they hear from Kelly say to Steve, hey, he needs more money from us. He's running out. And they're like, what the hell? He's a millionaire. The FBI are or the... The F- FBI right. are, yeah. Steve That's... Chambers then said that they had to get rid of Gant once and for all. <gasps> oh. They had to put their plan to eliminate him into action. He was only going to keep asking for money and also he was the only person that could connect them to the crime. They didn't know where David was, so the next time David rang, Kelly asked where he was. She said... Where? Basically, tell me where you are so we can send you more money and then stay there. And he told her that he was in Cozumel in Mexico and he was overheard telling Kelly that he loved her. Ah, uh, whoopsies. Steve Chambers then hired a man called Mike McKinney and asked him to take a few friends down to Mexico to kill Gant oh at that location. Oh, my God. The FBI were now in a race to find David Gant before the assassin did. Five months had now passed since the heist by this point and the FBI sent three agents down to Mexico. They knew where Gant was and they got to him first. Oof. They found him in Mexico and asked on the street they asked him for some ID and his response was, please tell me you're an FBI agent. Oh, wow. He told, them, he told them that he was really glad to see them and that they really needed to talk about some things. <gasps> Gant was arrested and taken back the, to the United States. Please tell me you're an FBI agent. He was actually relieved that... I think he was thinking that he was in trouble with the others. Yeah. So he was like, oh, at least I'm safe. So Gant told the FBI exactly how the heist occurred, which is quite interesting and ridiculous. Yeah. He told how he met Kelly at work and that the two had become close friends over several years. One day when they were hanging outside of work, she asked if he'd considered robbing Loomis Fargo. (laughs) And if he did, she had a friend that could help them hide the money before, you know, they could split it three ways. She hinted to him that if they stole the millions, the two of them could live together. Oh, Kelly. At first he thought she was joking and mucking around, but he started to take it more seriously when he got his credit card statement and calculated that it would take 30 years of his monthly repayments to fully pay it off. Oh, okay. So it's a fair debt then. Fair debt. Or he's making shit all money. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a little bit of both. It's probably like a medium debt, but mm. he's just not able to put it into Yeah, it. And, and at such a high interest rate that he yeah. just can't keep I, up. I reckon if you're paying people to be responsible for looking after millions of dollars, can you pay them a living wage so they don't, uh, they're, they're not, not tempted, tempted to steal <laughs> yeah. your fucking money? Literally standing in a room full of $17 million every shift. Like, that's and he's hard. getting paid not enough. Like, that is hard. You could just take 100 bucks like, every shift. Yeah, I, re- I read he was getting paid, like, 7 or $8 an hour or something. Oh what God. the fuck? So, and he was doing 60-hour, 70-hour weeks and still not able to pay off this credit card. Yeah, mm. it sucks. Yeah, that's a good point. Don't tempt them. And uh, this calculation he made about the credit card was in September, the month before the heist. He rang Kelly and told her that he was in. That's when he decided. Oh. Kelly was the middle woman acting between David Gant and her old school friend Steve Chambers. The two men never met or knew each other's names in order to stop at them implicating each other when one of them was caught. Steve Chambers put together the rest of the crew. He got his cousin Scott Brent and his high school friend Steve Payne and offered them 100 grand each to drive one of the vans and to help hide the money after the heist. Sounds like, you know, that not um, getting knowing each other's names to stop them implicating each other. That's, that's the first really smart thing. Sounds yeah, that's the thing. only only smart thing so far, isn't it? Yeah. Or they're just rude. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to know him. I don't need to know names. He sounds like a dick. <laughs> Better if I don't know him. Yeah. 
He also got a fake passport and set of documents made for David Gant so he could leave the country and get it to Mexico as soon as, as soon as possible after the robbery. David himself took stock of security and realised that he was often alone at the warehouse with all of the money and that late one night he'd be able to quietly empty the vault using his own keys and that no one would notice until the next day. Another thing, don't leave one man in charge and yeah. no one watching the security cameras. Yeah, that seems dumb. So dumb. A date was set and he thought he was all good to go until he realised that, tr- that a trainee was scheduled to shadow him that day. Oh. He only found out as he got to work. They're like, meet the meet the trainee guy. He'll be following you all night. <laughs> he'll be at your shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Every, everywhere you go, he'll go. That Toilet breaks unlucky. together. <laughs> if you look to steal anything, <laughs> he'll be there. <laughs> Just joking, of course you're not. But, yeah, why uh, would you? Why would you? <laughs> but definitely toilet breaks. You will take those together. <laughs> We're not kidding about that bit. <laughs> David had to tell the gang that he'd find a way to get the newbie out so he could he could be alone. So he didn't bail on the on the mission. Yeah. It was actually pretty easy. He he uh, pretended to lock the vault and then told the trainee that he could go, and then he did because he was tired. David got into his own car, pretended to leave, but then went back inside the warehouse when the other guy reversed out behind him and left. So now he was alone with all the cash. He took a deep breath and thought about what he was doing. Remember, everyone had said that he wasn't brave enough to do anything like this. He realised as soon as he put $1 into the van, he couldn't go back. He later said if he stole $1, he'd have to steal them all. <laughs> <laughs> and he did! Wow. He started putting the money into the van, putting the shrink-wrapped notes onto a pallet mover and then wheeling it over to a van. All the while, the other members of the team were outside the fence waiting for him. It took a lot longer than expected and it took several hours, but he filled the van up to the brim with money. <laughs> The stack was four feet high and nine feet long. Wow. It's an unbelie- cash. unbelievable amount of money. I love that they, you know, it took them several hours, but they still had time to measure it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a sec before we go. Like, can we get a selfie with this cat? <laughs> I just want to make a note of how tall and long this is. Just thinking as well, you know how the first anyone found out about it was when his wife called the cops saying he was missing and they the cops went there and realised it was gone. If he told his wife, he said, told her he was going away or something, he would have bought them. Oh, an even bigger head start. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah he doesn't even have to let her in on the plan. Just like, yeah, I won't be home tonight or something. It would have been hours until someone rocked up for the it's next Pretty shift. amazing that it even there was so long for anyone to find out about it. No alarms. No. no I know yeah. it's $18 million and they, they just leave one guy oh, who's God. been paid eight bucks an hour and they're like, you're our guy. We trust you, we you trust piece you. of shit. Obviously, yeah. we don't we don't like you or, or respect you enough to pay you any decent amount. And also, the boss just chewed him out like a month earlier about you know being. Yeah, you'll never be a vault supervisor. Yeah. So. Damn. There you go. He then took uh, the two security tapes, but had no idea that there was a third backup one. Clever to take the two. But yeah, you fucked up the backup one. He left one. He later said, "I didn't even know about it." <laughs> <laughs> So now all he had to do was drive the van to Sweet Sweet Freedom. The only problem was he couldn't get through the gate. It was chained shut and he just couldn't get it open. It wasn't locked, but the chain, he just couldn't get it off. A man ran up and started helping him and Gant thought he'd been caught, but it was actually one of his accomplices Ah. who was watching. He thought that only Kelly and the unknown Steve Chambers knew about the plan. So he he didn't know the two other guys had been hired. So he was a bit like, what the hell? This is weird. Anyway, fine, help me, whatever. But that started making him a bit worried. He's like, how many people know about the plan? Yeah. That's not good. So they helped him through the gate. On the, once on the other side, Gant drove to a car park and with the others. They convoyed. He got out of the van and into the car with into a car with Kelly Chambers. He handed the keys to the Loomis van to yet another stranger and was like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. How many people are here? <laughs> anyway. All right. Gant had only taken $30,000 of cash for himself and hoped to get his share of the loot later. Right. He he and Kelly got into the car and drove off to the airport. Wow. Behind the car park was two vans, the Loomis va- one and the, and Steve Chambers' van. The plan was to unload the Loomis van and put all the money into blue oil drums and then put that into the back of Steve's van. But there was a big problem. The key that Gant had handed the getaway driver was on an eight-inch key ring that contained over 200 keys and he'd forgotten to take note of which one was the correct key. And the van was locked. <laughs> so he had to cycle, 
<laughs> he frantically started trying all oh of the keys God. to get into the van. It's always uh, the last one you try as well. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> And when that wasn't fast enough, they tried to break the windows of the van without realising that it's an armoured car and it had bulletproof windows. Oh, man. (laughs) They were shooting bullets at it and that seemed to be proof from them somehow. (laughs) I just don't get it. I just don't get it. They went back to trying the keys and finally it opened. It doesn't even have remote central locking. Ugh. No, it's literally. <laughs> it had 200 remote central locking beepers. <laughs> <laughs> Seen a photo of the key ring and it, it is actually, it's like a comical prop with how many keys there are. It's so big. It is so big. <laughs> I always, I've done, I've played it with you. I always play that game with my brother when I, he's got so many keys on his key ring and I'm always like, what's this? Yeah. What's this? And he can name most of them. But he doesn't have 200 keys. You should be able to name them all. There's ones on mine that I wasn't able to name in that game. (laughs) That's why I like playing that game. Yeah. It just makes it in. You go, what? What? Yeah. How long has that been there for? I'm not sure. It can go, but then you're too scared to throw it out. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I've got a key on my key ring that I'm pretty sure is for a store I used to work at seven years ago, which doesn't exist anymore anyway. Like that door does not exist. So I can throw that key out, but I'm scared to. Yeah. What happens if. Somehow, you need that to save a life one day. Yeah. What happens then, Dave? Yeah, Dave, you're just going to let someone die because you wanted to throw out Jess's key? Yeah, it makes your handbag so much lighter. That's true. That's Do true. It. Oh. I'll throw out my car key as well and my car will just, it'll know to start. It just knows. It knows. <laughs> they finally got into the van and uh, they filled the barrels with money, but they had to leave behind the smaller notes. That's why the money was left behind. Right. They ditched the van, but for some reason, Steve dropped it off right near his work when they, and then they went and hid the money. I just cannot fathom that. Why? I like, guess I know a spot. Yeah, I guess you'd go to a place you know, but like, mate, it's like opposite your work. Go where you don't know. <laughs> like, you know, mate, you've had weeks to plan this. You just go for a drive, find somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Don't drop it off at work. He parked it in his space at work. No, that's not true. <laughs> but that would be that wild. Would be, uh, I'd be the last person that would put it here, right? <laughs> Why would I park it in my own car spot? Now where am I going to park? Huh? Yeah, huh? It's pretty dumb. It's a pretty dumb question on your part. Why am I sitting in the driver's seat? Yeah, great. Great question. Yeah. What, uh, where where else would I be sitting? In the passenger seat? In the driver of this getaway car? Oh, no. <laughs> I've said too much. <laughs> I would like a lawyer. (laughs) Well, over in the other getaway car, Kelly and David weren't having a great night either. They drove to the Columbia Airport with a plan of buying David a one-way flight to Mexico. I'm like, how did they drive to Columbia in America? Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, that's the name of the airport. (laughs) So North Carolina Airport. Yeah, yeah. No one had bothered to look into the fact that Columbia Airport doesn't fly to Mexico or anywhere internationally. Good. (laughs) They were like, They're we... basically driven to Avalon Airport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I mean, you can fly to Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of close to Did Mexico. Did you even look up flight times? Like it's late at night at this stage. I know. They haven't. You're that... just assuming you can rock up and there'd be a flight to Mexico. I, they just should have pre booked, but they didn't. So he had to take a 200 mile bus trip to Atlanta and then fly to Mexico via New Orleans. That's so he... cool. I'd be happy with that. <laughs> yeah. Bit of fun. In New Orleans Airport, a woman came up to him and said that she recognised him. He started to freak out immediately, thinking, what, is my face already out there? What's going on? And then she said, that's it. You're Boris Becker, that German tennis player. I used to get Boom Boom Becker when I was a little kid. (laughs) Did you? Yeah, I look like a little Boom Boom. (laughs) I think that's just like a redhead. That's your new nickname. (laughs) Oh, yeah, he was a redheaded guy with a beard. Yeah, just redheaded stuff. Little Boom Boom. Little Boom Boom. It's... Pretty weird that he's trying to lay low, and so, so the first time I imagine in a long time, people's like, "Hey, you look, you, I know you." Like he's yeah. like, "Oh, fuck, and, uh, fuck, uh, fuck, fuck, fuck." And then she said, "Oh, I thought you would have had a bigger German accent." Yeah, than that. He's like, "No, you, I don't think you know me." Nah, you're that German. <laughs> nah. Are you f- or should I say nine? <laughs> in your language, speak nine. easy Deutsch. <laughs> he finally made it to Cancun. This is Boris Becker in uh, Mexico, and started living the good life, spending lots of money on clothes, meals at all the best restaurants, hotels, and something he'd always wanted but wasn't allowed to buy on his strict budget, comic books. Oh. Cute. He's never contacted his wife at any stage either, has he? No. So she thinks she, he's disappeared or he could have been killed yeah. or something. She hasn't heard from him in, in five months. That's awful. 
He started to run out of, out of money pretty quickly living this lavish lifestyle. I remember he's only taken $30,000 with him. Yeah, only. It feels like, yeah, he could have made that stretch for so long, just living a pretty good normal life. Yeah, it'd be yeah. fine. It would be fine. But he ran out within like about two weeks or something. He oh, was my God. Like, he rang to ask for more money and uh, a man a- named- A.K.A. his money. Yeah, yeah, that's the, sort of. I imagine that yeah. you're probably spending because you're thinking, well, in a couple of months, yeah. I'm going to have millions. So who cares? Because I trust these people I've never met that yeah. I've gone into criminal business mm. with. Couldn't even name them. crime business with them. He rang to ask for more money, and a man called McKinney was sent to give him uh, money and keep an eye on him before killing him. He didn't know that, but McKinney was sent to kill him. McKinney arrived with some money, but only gave David $8,000. That was the first time Gant started to realise that perhaps he was going to get double-crossed and get cut out of the loot. Ah, oh, this is the first time he's thought of that. Yeah, honestly, he said he asked for 50 grand and then the guy rocked up and said, that's all you got. And he's like, eight grand? Well, these guys are millionaires. Yeah. He was like, oh, no, this isn't working out. Yeah, it's weird if they were trying to, why give him anything at all? It's also funny that he's kind of looked at his credit card debt and gone, I can't pay this off, so I'm going to rob a bank so I can pay this off. But then he's like leaves to go to another country and basically start another life. Like, he's never going to go back, is no, he? No, he's he's never going back. So, like, why worry then? <laughs> oh, he's not worried about the credit card. He's just he's going to live it up, like a millionaire on the beach in Mexico. Yeah. The, yeah. It does. It's, so why why have they given him the eight grand? I don't get that. He's there to kill him. Why doesn't he just go and just kill, kill him? Just kill him. Oh, I mean, I don't kill him, but you know what I mean, yeah. Or just give him 50 grand if he doesn't want to think anything's up. It just feels like it'd be one or the other. The way I see it, what I interpreted from it, which is no one said this in what I've read or anything, but the guy, McKinnon, that delivered him the money, I assume that he was probably given 50 grand. Right. And then said, this is all they gave me and gave him eight and just pocketed $40,000. Uh, right, right. And he's like, what do you, how, you know, what are they going to do? Yeah, I'm going to kill him. I'm too. also going to kill him, so who cares? Yeah, I wonder why he could have just given it to him, killed him, and then taken it back. Just don't just give it to him. him. Just kill him. Yeah. he's Well, I bet he wishes he'd killed him right then and there. <laughs> then one night in Cancun, when he, uh, where he was staying, a man came up to him and said, hey, you know who you look like? And expecting him to say, <laughs> Boris Becker. <Okay. Rekha. laughs> the guy said, you look like that guy that's wanted for the heist in North Carolina. <laughs> And David and he said, "Not nine, nine. <laughs> I is Boris Becker. <laughs> <laughs> I is Boris Becker. He yeah. has never. Well, he's, he was caught in a, off guard, wasn't he? So he did a pretty weird accent. Don't blame him for that. No, he's well, never spoken with a German accent before. You want him to all of a sudden in a moment just nail it, David? Please, just because you've got the blood of a German man. That's right, I do have the blood of this German. Well, he told him that he'd lived in Mexico for years." But was really panicked. But he like made up a little spiel. He's like, "Oh no, well, do I look like a guy? Oh, I lived here for ages. That's weird. Anyway, that's good. Quick thinking. Trying to get a selfie with Boris Becker. <laughs> he's, well, he's he's playing it so cool that he's like, take a photo with me. Show it. Show it to people. Tell them you saw me yeah, down cool. here. Hey, I'm Boris Becker. What, what are you a cop? I'd love it if you were. That'd be great. Please yeah. be a cop. Yeah. Can you call the cops? Yeah. <laughs> call that's cops how, that's why he said, I hope you're the FBI, because he was trying to play it so cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the FBI, I hope you are. <laughs> <laughs> am I under arrest? I really hope I am, because I'm going to get out of this. Because <laughs> I didn't do it. I'm I mean, Boris Becker. What am I talking about? I'm Boris Becker. <laughs> Guys, I've got to be out before Wimbledon. <laughs> <laughs> got to be out before Dick Wombledon. <laughs> <laughs> Pun king. Wait, is that is a pun? That is an absolute <laughs> pun. You've combined Wimbledon with Dick Womble. What part of pun do you not understand? I just thought that was like a bad portmanteau joke, which I also hate. Which is oh, awesome. I love them. That's a that's a most portmanteau jokes are puns. Oh, I see. Yeah, and I love a portmanteau. Mm, a pun manteau. <laughs> that itself is a bad bad pun manteau. Oh, so <laughs> complex. You use the word to describe the word. Yeah. You? yeah. So complex. Can I hear it in a it. sentence? <laughs> Uh, okay, great. Well, I feel like I still don't understand what puns are. Just keep, hey, just keep doing you and we'll yeah, let you know when it's Yeah, we'll pun. keep bringing the pun detector it out. It is clear when I'm, uh, that I'm ironically saying these things, right? Absolutely not. <laughs> what do you mean you love puns? <laughs> Matt, I encourage people to go along to your Melbourne International Comedy Festival show for one hour <laughs> of wordplay and puns. It's amazing what you can do <laughs> by combining words together for comic effect. Yeah, you are... I would say the pun king. Pun king. As we've been calling you for yeah. a long time. There is a uh, there is a one portmanteau bit in there, but it's an ironic. 
That's like you don't, Dave, you directed the show. Yeah, and I directed you to put more puns in and you ignored me. Very strange. <laughs> he said, behavior. how could I fit in more I puns? Know. Mate, I literally couldn't. It's filled. It's filled to the brim. Mate, which bits are puns? All of it. You know that bit about your beard? It's a pun. I don't want to give away material here. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has blown my mind. Well, speaking of beards, David started thinking, oh, my God, people are going to recognize you. So he shaved to change his appearance and started only going out at night. And wearing a hat. Very good. Yeah, at at night, good. suspicious. <laughs> yeah, that is suspicious. I wouldn't have shaved it off my beard. I would have Craig David my beard. Oh, wow. Like you a really, really... would have walked away re- from it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Did you... On Monday, I would have... Um... <laughs> Taken it for a drink. <laughs> Did you ask your beard what its flavour was? <laughs> <laughs> and What's... I think that's all he's hit. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what's your flavour saver. <laughs> it's part of a beard. That's a, is that a pun? Yeah. Is that a pun? <laughs> <laughs> Dave, he's wearing hats. It's night time. Oh, yeah. A lady at the hotel he was staying at later recalled he seemed to chain smoke in his room all day whilst listening to CDs of the Eagles. Nice. This is not the millionaire lifestyle he'd been hoping for. Still pretty rad. <laughs> listening to CDs. It's fucking sick. One day a mysterious man came to the door and told him that the man that had previously dropped off eight grand to him and the people in North Carolina were trying to kill him. Whoa. David was surprised but instantly knew he was never going to see the millions of dollars and that he'd better start moving around a bit if he was going to avoid getting murdered. He gave this guy a couple of thousand dollar tip for the information. <laughs> he only had eight. Yeah. And then the guy left and that's when he started moving around. Who is this, this guy? We never know. Dick Wombleton? We never know who Dick Wombleton, <laughs> if it was Dick. He changed hotels after this but a large error on his behalf was thinking that he could still trust Kelly. Oh. Kelly, That's real dumb. Kelly wouldn't be involved in any murder plot. He thought it must be the other guy trying to get rid of me. So that's why he told her which hotel he was staying at. Ah. Uh. Fortunately, the FBI were listening in on that phone call and were able to get to, get to him in Mexico before the killers. When he was arrested, David the Gann- band, the killers, <laughs> branded flowers in the gang. <laughs> that's even worse than a pun. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it wasn't a pun. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, when it he was, feels the same. <laughs> it just comedically on the same level. Yes. When he was arrested, David Gant was asked by an FBI FBI agent what it was about Kelly that made him act this way. He said, "Can you believe this? I only kissed her once. Turned out to be a pretty expensive kiss, doesn't it?" Oh, what a line! They put his sunglasses on. <laughs> and they said, "Please take your sunglasses off." He said, off. "Turns out to be a pretty expensive kiss, doesn't it?" And then put sunglasses on. <laughs> okay, that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. A weird sentence. <laughs> Is that literally what he said? Yeah. Turns out to be a pretty expensive kiss, doesn't it? <laughs> Does not make sense. Are you? Is it the doesn't that's bothering you? Yeah. Didn't it? Yeah. Okay. I guess that fixes it. If only you were there on the night, you could have saved David from quite a bit. Of embarrassment. This is so weird. So he was just like, well, Kelly will be my girlfriend. Yeah, he was in love with her. <laughs> yeah, honestly, he was in love with her. so pathetic. Despite them both being married to other people, he was like in love with her. They would never really obviously did anything together. She kissed him once and implied that they could live together when, when they got the money. Yeah, she and, meant like housemates. Yeah. <laughs> separate rooms, mate. Or separate mansions that were connected by a bridge. Oh, the that, dream. That she could like bring up at any time. Yeah. A drawbridge. When she was with another man. conversation. (laughs) (laughs) So that's how it all happened. Now the FBI knew everything. They quickly swooped in and arrested Stephen Michelle Chambers and Kelly Campbell, as well as a lot of other people. All in all, 21 people were arrested. Whoa. Shit. The main gang members, plus friends and family of Steve, who were arrested for money laundering. He had asked them to open safety deposit boxes in their own names and put his stolen cash in there for him. And they had went to jail for, for that. Fuck. 20 pleaded guilty and the one who pleaded not guilty was found guilty and was given a very harsh sentence. Oh. Shit. It's a roll of the dice. They searched the chamber's house and it took two full days to count the money using those money machines. <laughs> and then you got one person just like, I'll just do this manually. <laughs> a one. <laughs> two. Let me just double check it. <laughs> I don't trust technology. So. Oh, I've forgotten what I was up to. Hang on, I'm going to start again. A one. <laughs> <laughs> it really feels if they were so silly, they weren't so loose with the cash, they 
probably wouldn't have been busted. They Their behaviour was ridiculous. Oh, and this is another thing. Apparently Steve Chambers, when he organised the gang... He called he, it the Steve Chambers <laughs> Gang. It's a good name. <laughs> he said to the gang, hey, guys, we've got to... After this, don't do anything too crazy that will draw attention to us. Uh. He said that, and he's the guy that went out and bought a truck, a BMW, a Rolex, a diamond ring, all uh-huh. a house in $600,000 in cash. But he said to the other guys, hey, let's not go crazy. Yeah, be cool, play Wait, cool be for cool, a bit. Yeah. And, and he, him and his wife are going around with the, the branding of the people they stole from. Yeah. <laughs> I think the money just went absolutely to their heads and they just lost the plot. And just thought they were invincible. All up, 88% of the stolen cash was accounted for, leaving $2 million missing. Oh, that's not bad. To try and reclaim some of that, in February 1999, over 1,000 items bought with stolen money was auctioned publicly. Yeah. I would have loved to have gone to that. Yeah. The Beamer was on display, all those trucks and stuff. The Velvet Elvis yeah. was there. <laughs> the Velvis. Oh, <laughs> that is great pun work. Pun mento. Do you get it now? Oh, that was a that was a pun. that was a pun manto. That was a pun manto. <laughs> I hate pun manto. <laughs> That's great. Uh, this uh, this auction raised three hundred sixty thousand US dollars, so got a bit more of the money back. None of the six main accused had enough money to hire their own lawyers and were appointed legal counsel by the court. Can you imagine that? <laughs> they were just like, "Can I just dip into the money I stole?" <laughs> hey, to get d- a good hey, if you look under my mattress, you'll be able to pay my. Oh, hang on. Oh no! Don't look under my mattress. <laughs> That's still mine until I'm guilty, right? <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Chambers was sentenced to seven years, eight months in a federal prison. Steve Chambers got eleven years, three months. So he's basically just give him years. Basically, the, why are there the months mastermind? involved? Mike McKinney. Who's the one that they'd hired to put do the hit on David Gann? He was given the longest sentence, eleven years, six months for conspiracy to murder. But surely, I mean, the others did all the other crimes plus pay to guy to murder. I know, surely it do- that doesn't seem like much, does it? Kelly Campbell, the girlfriend that David thought he had, cooperated with authorities and received five years and ten months. For a time, it was nicknamed the Hillbilly Heist <laughs> because nearly all of the major players in the case came from small towns around Charlotte. So they joked about their heel billy background. Uh, no not... need to be bloody classless now, Dave. Having a good me. chuckle there from your bloody ivory tower in your affluent east. What are you talking about? I'm quoting the Charlotte du- Observer. You were having a good old giggle. Yeah. I don't respect hillbillies. Sue me. I will. I'll okay. see you in court. <laughs> see you in court. Well, I'll see you in federal court. You're out of order. <laughs> no, you're out of order. <laughs> this whole goddamn system's out of order or something like that. No, fuck you. <laughs> You cannot top a no fuck you. So, <laughs> legally, a yes fuck case you. To, oh, damn it. I was going to say case closed. <laughs> yes, fuck me. <laughs> All right, Says Jack, the judge. Got, there's a new player in this game. <laughs> uh, finally, our main man that dared to dream, David Gant, went to a federal prison for six and a half years. He was released in 2004, but when asked if he'd do it again, he said, now that I'm sentenced, so like, you know, no one's asking him to behave well in front of a judge. He said, would I do it again? Yep. <laughs> An opportunity like that only comes around once in a lifetime. <laughs> so, but you... <laughs> but you fucked it. Yeah, but he's saying I'd do it again. Probably differently, I guess. I guess he'd do it no, and not but, get caught. Okay, no, what I'm objecting to is he's saying I'd do it again. It only comes around once in a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. So There's a logic it, flaw there. It won't come around again. For you to do it again. No, but if you, if you had your time again, if you could go back in that time machine, you're back in that, that having that thought of if I put $1 in, I have to put it all in. Would he do it? And he actually would. So Despite knowing. That it ended up pretty bad. I guess he had a fun couple of months, five months. Yeah, well, most of it was what freaking happened? out in Mexico. What happened to his wife? Any she idea? divorced him. Funnily oh. enough. After he went to jail. Won't stick with him. Oh, okay. I see what's happening. Stand by your man. <laughs> Dolly said it right. Oh, God, I love Dolly so much. If this, is, if this story is ringing bells to anyone out there, maybe not you guys, but in 2016 this story was the basis of a comedy film, Masterminds, starring Zach Galifianakis as David Gant, ah. Kristen Wiig as Kelly Campbell, and Owen Wilson as Steve Chambers. Ah. Oh, that's a great cast. Yeah, I haven't seen it. That sounds like something I'd watch on a plane. Yes, it seems like a plane movie to me too. <laughs> it didn't get great reviews and it was a real comedy take on this already funny heart. So there's a lot of exaggeration in there, but that's the loose the loose uh, right. the loose basis. To promote the film, David Gant 
uh, who was on set for the for the film. They invited him out and he met Zach Galifianakis and all that sort of stuff. David Gant had an AMA or asked me anything on Reddit and I thought I'd finish with a couple of questions yes. that people asked it. People said, has this affected your ability to get a job, being a quasi-famous bank robber and all? And he said, good question. Oddly, most employers are very understanding as long as you are honest with them up front. Can you believe that? And now he works in construction. Well, Even you though- can't steal a building, can you? He also, he also said, once you tell most people, first of all, they don't believe you, but then they also go, if I had the shot to steal $17 million, I probably would as well. So people... Who is he hanging yeah. out with? <laughs> Hey, if I had the chance to do crime, I probably would too. I mean, you've got a chance to do it any time. I think that's what people got to understand could, is you got to believe in yourselves more. There's always opportunities to commit crimes. I could bash Matt with a chair right now. Don't do that. You're not going to get money for that. No, I don't want money, but it's a crime. Oh. I'll, I'll pay you $70 million to do that. To bash you? Yep. All right. Pick a chair. <laughs> Which one do you want to break a, your uh, skull? Is that a character from one of those... Shows with the little animals. <laughs> Pikachu. Pikachu, okay, yep. Pikachu. Wow. Yeah. Dave, can you edit out AMAs, all of the, AMAs. The, any I of the can, things I've said today, could you just I edit me out of this episode? I'm going to leave that in there because you need to learn. No, please yeah. take that bit out. He has to learn. That was worse than even the bad bits. Do you have that them? was meant to be bad, but it was worse than that. So bad it was real bad. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fine line. It went all the way around from so bad it's good back around again to just so bad. Yeah. He was also asked, how much money did you make off the movie? And he said, I didn't get money for this. What I got was a great vacation and a chance to tick something off my bucket list. I knew that isn't. Ex- I know that it isn't exciting to most people, but I, regular Joe, had the chance to be on a movie set. Who wouldn't want to do that? Plus, the food truck was awesome. <laughs> my wife called me a hobbit for having second breakfasts. <laughs> Oh, he got, he got remarried. Yes. He also revealed, I just want to quickly say that they didn't give him any money because I think he's not allowed to profit from crime. Right. But the, yes, highlight, yeah. but the highlight for him was that there was a food truck there. The food, he's a simple man. Food is famously good on um, shoots. Sets, yeah. Yeah. Hollywood stuff too. I imagine it'd be really good. So, yes, he also revealed that he asked me anything that since getting out of prison, he's remarried and has a child and is much happier now than he's ever been. Oh, that's great. Well, so, yeah. So, this did all work out well for him. Yeah. He said he's much happier now in his 40s than he was in his 20s. That's for sure. I've uh, linked all my sources, including the Reddit AMA. There's lots of questions that he answered if you're interested. Brilliant. You can link below. And I've also got to give a big shout out to that. Uh, I made fun of the acting in it before, but there's a great doco that was made on the heist by the Discovery Channel in 2001. It's an episode of the FBI Files titled The Unperfect Crime. And uh, you can watch it on YouTube and there's a link to that as well. Yeah, if you want a, a more serious take on do, it. Do we know what, did you say what happened to the the mastermind? Do we know where he's at? Steve Steve, Sherbo? he's... Also, no, Steve Chambers. He's been released from prison, and the only thing I could find out about him was apparently he claims to be a changed man. Right, thank God. Are he and Michelle still together? I'm not sure. I couldn't work that out. Maybe a bit of long distance, you know. He's in prison for. They also had kids too. They had oh. two kids, so that's hard, you know. Both they of had them. two diamond encrusted kids. <laughs> <laughs> Those kids had fillings that were just pure gold. It's really bad for them, but oh yeah, they were like, "Do it, dentist." Golden baby teeth. <laughs> yeah. That is not healthy. I love it. Oh, uh, but that is what I imagine is probably the stupidest bank heist of all time. I love it. That is amazing. I told you the Patreon people chose wisely. They always choose so well. I don't think looked vaguely into it. I was like, oh, that sounds fun. A heist. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. I did not realise how ridiculous it was. So, yeah, to the people that voted for that, you voted for the right one. Yeah, well done. So fun. Amazing. And uh, I'm glad. It sounds like David Hicks' story ended well because he, I think all these kind of stories that. David Gant? David Hicks suggested David it. Garrett, sorry. <laughs> it all ended up well for also, David Hicks. Also David Gant. David Gant, yes. He, um, <laughs> David Garant's another David. <laughs> it didn't work out well for him. David Garant, stuff him. Because, yeah, that, that sort of character and these things, the sort of hapless guy who's been taken advantage of. Yeah. He did seem position. a little bit like just trying to make the best of it. The, yeah. his, his version in the collar bomb heist obviously ended. It was a very sad ending. Yes. Mm. So this is a much nicer way to finish, and it actually sounds like it turned his life around. Okay. Yeah, that's right. He's happier now than he ever said. He's got a got a child which he didn't have before, and a new wife who 
maybe he gets on with better. I don't know. So yeah, it's all worked out. And I um, and Loomis Fargo would have been insured for that. So really, don't feel bad for them losing a couple of million dollars. They would have, you know, claimed that on insurance. That is just insane. I don't know how to feel because like he still did a crime, but he did the time, and he deserves a second chance. Okay. <laughs> Really convinced myself. Yeah, that was great. It was great to see. I worked through that. So now it's time for that special segment of the show where uh, we get to talk about one patron who's given us a fact, a quote, or a question. One of the three. Can I just ask what this segment's called? Yeah. Jess, you know it. It's called One of the Three. And this week on One of the Three. (laughs) That's that's quite good because it could refer to us as well. Yeah, there's three of us. One of us has diarrhea. Which one? Don't, you it's said you me. wouldn't tell anyone. Uh oh, oh, it was, maybe it's two of the three then. <laughs> Matt, you got that here as well. We all got the runs. Can we wrap it up? Because I have to go. Oh, I gotta well, wrap this it up. week's fact, quote, or question comes from Maximilian Duke. Yes, Maximilian. Which is a fantastic name. Uh, to give yourself a chance to be in the fact, quote, or question segment, you've got to support. Patreon on the patreon.com slash do go on on the Sydney Scheinberg level, I believe. Is that right, Dave? Absolutely right. The Sydney La- Scheinberg deluxe package. Memorial. Rest in peace. That's right. Level. In memoriam of the great man. And you, as well as giving a fact quote or question, you also get to give yourself a title. And this week, Maximilian Duke has given himself the title of Ju- Juice Box Evangelist. In brackets, I need to be around more adults. Wow. <laughs> Maximilian. You're a crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this adds a bit more context. I like to that it a lot. Well. He says, uh, so he's he's gone for a question. All right. And as is tradition, I have not read this prior to now. Uh, he writes, writes, writes. <laughs> Did he write the word I write? <laughs> he wrote, my son Jacob wants me to ask who would win in a fight, the Greek gods or Patrick the Starfish from SpongeBob SquarePants? Wow. Patrick. A question that's been debated for centuries. <laughs> I don't, I'm not super familiar with that. Hit, some, hit me with some Greek gods. I get confused between them and the Romans. Zeus. I reckon already. Aphrodite. Already you've probably got a win for the, the ne- gods. Neptune. Pluto. Wait, are they, I thought they were the Roman ones, the planets were the Romans. Oh, it's hard to tell because they they've got the same gods just with different names. Yeah. Ugh. Poseidon. I, I'm giving the win. So you're saying. I say Patrick. I'm saying the gods. So, Dave, you got the deciding vote here. Okay. Well, I know that Patrick seems pretty dumb on the show. Yeah, but when he gets angry. Yeah. Is when he, he a an- sponge? He's a starfish. Oh, no. He says they're a starfish. But he's not made of sponge. He's made of starfish. He's made of sponge cake. Oh. No, he's a starfish. Yeah. And have you ever killed a starfish? No. No one can. <laughs> can't be, it can't be done. Oh, well, that changes. So I guess your answer then, of course, is Patrick would win because he just can't die. Okay, well, um... unlike Greek gods, oh, have you killed a Greek god? Yeah, yes, they've, of course. They've got places like underworlds and stuff where they can go to, which they're sort of dead, but they're always seemingly alive. That's why I, I stick with the gods. Anyway, he says, goes on to say, after you debate, here are his thoughts on how this battle goes. Just a reminder, he is eight. I was going to oh, ask how the, old the is The son's yep. thoughts, great. I like that's a reminder. I'm guessing at some point I knew that before and he is now reminding me. The only, thank you so much, Maximilian Duke, you bloody goddamn legend. He says, the only God that can come close to Poseidon, oh, the only God that can come close is Poseidon. I mentioned him. Good, I got one. Because he is the God of the oceans. But Patrick, being a starfish, can regrow any limbs that get hurt. Patrick would win by sticking to a spot on Poseidon's back that he can't reach and stay there long enough to cause a deadly infection. <laughs> oh, so you two were right. I stuffed that up. Yeah. God. That is so much that epic up mid-sentence. Wow. That is, uh, I love that logic. I do too. That means he's like in grade two. He's eight. He's grade two or grade three. Amazing. You're smarter than me. And you're a lot younger than me. So many And I'm intimidated decades by younger. that. Decades, thank you. <laughs> I've been kind. <laughs> You've been very kind. I really do appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks so much, Maximilian Duke, and, of course, your son, Jacob. Thank you, Jacob Duke. The juice box evangelist. <laughs> and, yeah, get out there and, and meet some adults. 
you know? Yeah. Although your son sounds as smart as one anyway. Uh, also, at this time of the show, Dave, we also like to shout out to some patrol. Oh, yes, that's right. If you want to uh, support us on Patreon, you get all sorts of little rewards, including two bonus episodes a month, a certain level you can get those that no one else hears. And so, and usually it's one report a month. And we say a mini report, but most of the time they go for an hour or more. So yeah. it's really longer than most other podcast normal episodes, <laughs> as well as uh, something other fun like a quiz or, uh, you know, a Q&A, all sorts of different things. So two episodes a month. And also, yeah, shout outs, little... Uh, Bums. Yeah. <laughs> little we, bum. We give you a little bum. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't recall that happening. Oh, uh, we don't let you do it. Oh. <laughs> You can't be trusted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We just do all sorts of stuff, including, yeah, shout outs, which we'd like to do now to thank some of the patrons. Yes. Would you mind if I kick her off? Please. That's right. Now, usually Bopper. Yeah. Comes up with something, but hmm. have you got something? No. If not, Matt, have you got something on? Hi. Well, uh, so we so talked about heists. Maybe today. what they would do if they had $18 million. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's nice. I'll kick it off if that's okay. Can I kick it? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> you lo- can. Firstly, I'd love to thank from beautiful Sydney, Australia. Australia's biggest and most beautiful city on the bay with this, the bridge and the old opera house. Is that like a caveat? The most beautiful city on a bay with an opera house and a bridge. No, it was Australia's most beautiful city, full stop. Here's a few things about Sydney. I yeah, love cool, that cool. bridge. Oh, man, love that opera house. It's Michael Nielsen. Michael Nielsen. Michael Nielsen. So you would need a lot of money if you want to live in Sydney, yeah, am I right? that's right. I <laughs> 17 mean... million is not going to go very far <laughs> out there. Not right? in Piper's Point. <laughs> yeah. Or Point, Point Piper, is it? Oh, really? that one? It's probably the real one. They don't let, let me in there. <laughs> let me in. <laughs> you stand outside. Let me in. You literally probably couldn't buy a good property there for seventeen million dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> Bloody is... hell! That's so, wild. what would Michael do with his money then? No, I invest. Yeah. In what? A vacuum cleaner company. Oh, really? Yeah, the Australian version of Dyson. Nielsen. Is Nielsen? That's yeah, right. it could be Nielsen. So yeah. he'd invest in his own company. He creates a company. All right, let's change it. The, the new game is what would they call their vacuum cleaner company that they'd invest in? I hate that. Okay. And, all, <laughs> and are they all going to be their surname? You bloody got it, mate. Bada bing, bada boom. Nielsen, next. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish you luck on that endeavour. We've had a few people messaging the saying we've got to come back and do another live Sydney show too. Yes, we really want to do that. Yes. I'm sure we'll get there back there this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but think, it's always nice for people to say, hey, it definitely remind makes, us. Well, it's funny because I'm like, oh, yeah, we should do that when people <laughs> remind us. Yeah, honestly. We should have a plan probably, but often it is someone messaging me going, oh, yeah, <laughs> we should do that. I like it. Oh, yeah. Even though people message us about Perth all the time and we still have not done that, but we will. Yeah, but if we get 1,000 more messages, <laughs> we'll be there. Anyhow, thank you so much, Michael Nielsen. I'd also love to thank from Ray Moore in Mo. <laughs> Minnesota? Milwaukee. Oh, right. I think you meant Moe, like Mo. the place in Victoria. That's Moe. Is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Dave. I, no, I, I wasn't giving you. I thought you'd mispronounced it. Um, I've spent a bit of time in Moe. I think Moe might be Missouri. Missouri? But look it up. Where the Ozarks are from. Yeah, look it up. There was a little bit of the Ozarks about today's episode, I was thinking, like just the stealing money and laundering and stuff. Have you watched any of the Ozarks? Yeah, yeah. I saw the first Ozark, I should season. say. Second season's pretty good as well. Looking forward to the third. Haven't watched it. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I refuse. Jason Bateman, does he also direct it? Is that right? He directed the first episode oh, of right. Ace and I think uh, others as well. You are correct. It is Missouri. Well done. I'll be Mizzou. I'll be cold in the ground before I recognize Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if uh, Boyd Kemper from Raymore went to Mizzou State, which is uh, the uni that they're trying to get to, one of the kids in. Ozark is trying to get to. All right, and if he didn't go, he could spend some money to get him in there because I hear that's all you have to do these days in America is throw cash and then your child can go to any university. That's right, especially if you're an actor. Yeah, topical material. (laughs) From a month or two back, 
You do have your finger on the pulse there at the project. There it's you go. still big news, baby. <laughs> Boyd, Boyd Kempka. Kempka. Thanks, Boyd. Yeah, thanks, Boyd. And uh, hopefully you spend your money wisely on that education. Yeah. Because that's ed- what he's going to do. $17 million on a on a uni degree. Maybe not all of it. You can save some of it, but a large chunk. I have heard that their degrees are pretty expensive. Yeah, well. I hear that. It's what, 200 grand for like a Bachelor of Arts or something? Yeah. It's... Boyd Kempka. That's a great name. So good. It reminds me of Juliana Kupka, the uh, yeah. from the sky. See. Dave, would you like to thank some people? Oh, I would love to thank some people. And I would love to thank, first of all, from Gates Head in old GB, Simon Flint. Simon mm. Flint. That's a good name too. Yeah. That's what? very great. That's a great British name. Hello, I'm Simon Flint. Hello. Welcome to my... Oh, I was really hoping oh. that I would just like finish that sentence and it would give me the thing. Welcome to my tea observatory. Yes. Oh, is that what he's investing $17 million in? A tea observatory. So what is it, like a tea house down the bottom and then a giant telescope Dave, up top? Dave, I'll stop you right there, mate. It's self-explanatory. <laughs> Okay. It's a tea observatory. Yeah. Right, right. I don't. Can you believe him? It's real weird. You are so embarrassing. So just to confirm, it's a telescope up top and a tea house. I'm, not, I, I'm not dignifying I that. I don't even know response. if he's joking or yeah. what is going is on. Is he doing here. a bit? You, is this a bit? Are you doing a bit? That's a good uh, bit. That's a good bit. Yeah. If you're doing a bit, it's very funny. That's a funny bit. Yeah, I love, love comedy. You are. G- <laughs> he <laughs> is he's good at it. Again. it. You had us for a second there. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. You had us. I was just trying to think of a pun because I love him. Simon Flint. <laughs> is he saying his name back? Is that a pun? <laughs> yeah, Simon Flint is a pun. Yeah. Thank huh. you, Simon. Thank you. I'll see you at your tea observatory, and uh, we know who that is, obviously. And uh, look forward to uh, patronizing you. Patronizing you. Yeah, no, I, I was being patronizing before. Yeah. Hello, I'm Simon Flint, and uh, welcome to the tea observatory. And I probably need to say no more. <laughs> probably didn't need to say no more. <laughs> Are you speaking I double probably negative? Didn't say no more. That's Simon Flint's catch. Nobody cry. ever lets Simon Flint get that far into a sentence, so he just sort of gets really confused. <laughs> They're people... normally be observing tea by that stage. <laughs> They're off. Um, yeah. So thank you to Simon. Thank you so much, and I'd also like to thank from Yukon. In Oklahoma. Yukon. Oh. Give me two. Give me two. Me ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank Lauren Roselle. Oh. oh. Is it, are we only allowing people with great names to yeah. be patrons? People of often them? ask how long does it take to get read out. <laughs> if you have a shit name, we'll never read it. <laughs> so stop pledging now. That Start is change- not true. No, Dave. that is not true. Start changing your names. We try and get you in the order that you pledge. Sometimes Patreon is a little bit weird with the way it orders the names. We will get to you all. We, we promise. We click a button at the top. It sorts everyone by date and then spills out the occasional weird glitch of someone from a year earlier or later. It's real odd, but... Anyhow, we're we're on top of it. We understand computers. We go. <laughs> what would Lauren be investing in? Well, let me look up Yukon, Oklahoma. What do they got Yukon. there? Things to do what in Yukon. What about meatball subs? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, they they have a few things. They got Chisholm Trail Park. Chisholm. No, they got a Chisholm Park. Sadly, not. God, you hear what you want to hear. <laughs> Sunrise Park. <laughs> Did you say I've got beautiful eyes? <laughs> <laughs> you do, but that's not what I said. <laughs> Uh, oh, maybe she can set up a, a hotel there because the th- three-star hotel averages one hundred and fifty-one dollars there. But I reckon if you had a four-star hotel, yeah, let's go. Let's go f- hog wild five-star hotel. Five-star. Why not? Why not? There's always. I mean, there's always a need for hotels. Yeah, you're yeah, always going to do well in that biz, especially in Yukon. Very cool. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, good luck with um, I, the hotel. Invest your money wisely. I'd like to stay here at the Yukon Hotel. Oh, that's great. Would you need one one room? Yukon, give me two. <laughs> it's a little act out there. What could happen at the hotel? Just loved it. <laughs> <laughs> the silence said it all. I don't get it. Uh, it's just, it's What's it from? Point Break. Ah, uh, yes. Keanu oh, Re- I did see. I Keanu knew it Reeves I couldn't. And- I knew it and I couldn't place it. Sorry, yes. Not Nick Nolte, the guy that... Now, oh, Gary Busey. Like, Gary Busey. <laughs> now it's hilarious. Ha, 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 Give me two. Meatball. <laughs> Meatball. Um, uh, why is it so good? It's so funny. The delivery is so, so strange. It's so good. <laughs> 
Do you reckon I can thank some people as well? Oh, that'd be the best. That'd I'd be divine. love it. Please take us home with some classic names. We've had some good ones. I would like to thank from Las Vegas. Oh, it's not Brandon <laughs> Flowers, is it? From the Killers. Close. <laughs> It's really? Donovan Brown. Oh, oh wow. Brownie, the I bass think, player. I reckon that he should put his 17 million on red. Oh, I would have said on black. Where's the snipe style? I'd go half and half. Half and half? Yep. You're not familiar with the Wesley Snipes quote? <laughs> he goes, always better black. And then he kills someone or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's a generational thing. People, Kids would quote that a lot when I was a kid. I reckon, Donovan, you put... Half of it on black, half of it on red. <laughs> and then we'll come up <laughs> snake eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, that's the risk you run with gambling. <laughs> Double okay. zero. Oh, no. <laughs> the house always wins. <laughs> but good on you, Donovan. You took a punt. What I'd do is I'd put, if I had Donovan, I'd put half of it if on black. If you had Donovan, you'd put half of him on black. Half of it on black, half on red, and half on zero, zero. <sighs> Course. Can you do that? All bases. Can you bet on zero? Yeah, you get higher odds. You get thirty-six to one, but it's really pay. But the chances of it are thirty-seven to one or something. Everything is just slight, slightly out of whack, so that they win. Like you get you double your money, but you've got just less than a fifty-fifty chance of winning because mm, there is. that's why they they spin it thousands of times a day, which they do. Eventually, they come out on top. Uh, uh, uh. Um, so thank you to Donovan. And finally, I would like to thank from Eureka. <gasps> it's the stockade. In California. What? There's a Eureka in California? Apparently. Oh, I mean, it's not like they had a big gold rush or anything, is it? <laughs> I'd like to thank Andrew Barney. Oh, yes. And he invests in children's entertainment. Oh. Because of? Andrew. Because he's close to Hollywood? Because of Barney Rubble from the Flintstones? Barney the Dinosaur. Oh, come on, Matt. Two plus two is four. Barney <laughs> wasn't a dinosaur. The dinosaur was the toilet and the sink and, like, the stairs. Barney was the man who used all of those things. You guys haven't seen oh. the Flintstones. <laughs> you just stuck on Flintstones. Was that, um, was that quite a groundbreaking show when you were a kid? Yeah, was that, like, reflective <laughs> of current life? Was that realism? No, that was set in the future. <laughs> oh, right. The Jetsons fucking blew his mind. <laughs> set in the future when people could ride dinosaurs. Back in your day, you just ran from them. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That would have been a really exciting time. Yeah, it was really nice to see a future, like a bit of a utopian future where dinosaurs and man would get along. Couldn't wait. Never happened, of course. We ended up killing them all. Mm. Mm. No. That got lost from the history books. I killed quite a few dinosaurs. <laughs> That's what we used to call them. Dinosaurs. Yeah, you're about to get real dinosaur <laughs> when I chop your fucking head. <laughs> yeah, that's a pun. <laughs> that's a pun. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it again. You've done it again. So thank you to Andrew as well for uh, supporting yeah. the show and supporting the future mm. generations with children's entertainment. Thank you. Oh, six six legends there. I'm going to go out on a limb. Yeah. Six legends. Good call. Hall of Famers. Yeah. But Every I mean, name we read out is, goes into the Hall of Fame. Oh, we, should, we should have said that a lot earlier, but it's true. It is true. That we're secretly keeping a Hall of Fame here. And you're in. And you're inducted for life once you read out. Yeah. That, wow. uh, that motion has been grandfathered, which I believe means backdated. Is that right? Yes. Thank you. Jess looks grossed out somehow. Come on, Jess, are you not a lawyer like Matt and I? No. You oh. know that. Oh. Oh. Do we, does that mean we have to kick her off? <laughs> Come this on. is a lawyer's only club. <laughs> I'm a man of the cloth, the <laughs> law cloth. Oh, stop. <laughs> well, before you take that cloth off, we have to wrap up the episode. It's almost time to cloth off. <laughs> yeah. that, that was, is that what you were doing? Cloth on, cloth off. But we have to say thanks for listening. Before you go, Jess wanna... got diarrhea. She's touching cloth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a messy cloth. You get in contact at any time with us via Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. What am I missing there? Anything? Internet. YouTube. <laughs> Internet. <laughs> uh, log on to the World Wide Web. Uh, go w to... w w dot. No, I've, you've lost me. Fuck, <laughs> sorry. You've got to do go on pod.com for links to our Patreon, suggest a topic, buy online merchandise, do all sorts of fun things to keep the show going. And, uh, yeah, there's links to our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which are at do go on pod, and our YouTube, which we're putting up some apps. 
Yeah, so all the uh, live episodes of the, mainly have videos, they're including the UK tour, and they're, they'll all be slowly, slowly going up now as, as I come back to catching up, and that'll get us all the way up to the live Melbourne one sometime real soon. Um, you can also check out on our website, there's a, a live shows page. So if, if you're wondering if, if we're coming to a town near you, you'll be able to find out there. If we're not, which is very possible, send us a message and tell us you yeah. want us to come. Considering we're so at this stage, we're only coming to the city we're in now. No, we're also going to Koh Samui. Koh Samui, oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. The Koh Samui listeners will be there in June. It is wild. Flights yes. are booked. We're coming. Dave's, we're definitely Dave's working do... on his six pack. Yeah. I've got one, five to go. That's why he's got diarrhea. He's trying to <laughs> shit his way to a six pack. Hey, me too. <laughs> Does that help? If no. you If you get rid of all the food inside of you, I reckon. One right. time I threw up so much. Uh, you got was, a six pack. I was very sick. Yes. <laughs> no. That's why they're called sick, sick pack. Sick pack. Oh, that's a pun. Not, that per- <laughs> not permanently. <laughs> not permanently, but all the muscles were so tight that my stomach was like flat as. Oh, don't tell me that because I'm going to go for it in Thailand. Just throw up all the time. All the time. That's a terrible system. I will look so hot. You're gonna, you're gonna get beach bod ready. I want this to end. <laughs> The show, yeah. All right. Well, oh yeah, we're still on. <laughs> yeah, you, we just. I have diarrhea. Oh no. Let's go. Hold it. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> All right, team. Thanks so much for listening to the show. But until next week, I'll say thank you and, as always, goodbye. Later. Diarrhea. <laughs> this podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you. At Swinburne, university is more than just a conveyor belt to your career. Join us at our open day and discover what university should be. See how 3D concrete printing could free us from boring buildings. Dive into the workings of the human body and meet our Oscar shortlisted grads. University isn't just where you'll study, it's where you'll experience the best times of your life. So when it comes to choosing the uni that's right for you, Do today what you'll smile about tomorrow. Swinburne Open Day, Sunday 28 July, 10 till 4 in Hawthorne.